Welcome to another episode of The Stream Room. It's the podcast about content creation by content creators for content creators. And I'm afraid we're going to have to let you in a secret today. All big streamers are fake. In fact, Get out all of here. streamers what? in general, what? I'm sorry, guys, are fake all around. We're not organic. We play up the big moments. Is that true? No. Uh, is what I'm saying fake? Who knows? You're a liar. I'm, I'm You're sorry. out of order. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, everyone calm down. Calm down. It's, it's a real thing. Let's hold hands. But I'm one of your hosts, Reaps. Hello, I'm LJ, and I've just ruined the whole history. <laughs> And I'm fake tacular. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Uh, how you hey going guys, there, how boys? You doing? Lovely to see you. It's oh, probably our highest, highest energy intro. I, I know. Say. I felt it. Well, we're talking about Mortal Kombat beforehand, um, mm. and we, we really got pumped up for that. We got the Mortal Kombat theme music, I'm sure, blaring in our brains. And mm -hmm. yeah, how can you not be pumped? Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, speaking of pumped, hey, why don't you guys scroll down and pump that description full of comments and likes and subscribe mm. and then just pump yourself up <laughs> to let the whole video play because we're a new channel and it really helps us out. Every time you guys like and comment, it actually does work. It's really weird to see a small channel like this and how effective the engagements are. <laughs> I'm begging you. <laughs> honestly, honestly. <laughs> but, but the channel in the algorithm. <laughs> yeah, the there you algorithm. Go. Yeah. While uh, you pump yourself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 this is going to play into a story that i have for this week but um i was going to say uh nick uh as soon as that episode came out the other day i had about like i would say 10 10 people coming into my chat saying yes. an egg is a vegetable and me going it's a fruit and then people in the chat going what the f are you talking about <laughs> And I was like, no, it's just let's continue on with the stream, everybody. Let's just focus that on what I'm doing. makes me so happy. Yeah. I, I haven't been live since the new episode came out, so I haven't had that yet. But yeah. I had so many people coming in being like, shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, boggers, 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 boggers. I, I had a few people coming in with the shut it down. <laughs> I'm Yeah, I'm expecting a lot of like, like uh, egg is a vegetable. Oh, I'm it, expecting, was, it was I'm on another level. It was on I another level. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Speaking of speaking of people we've had in our chat tonight and people we've talked about, uh, mm -hmm. shall we get into before we talk about who's fake and who's not? Uh, because we have the inside scoop. If you didn't know, we've been all paying attention to who the fakes are. Um, let's let's chat to Nick. How have you been, bud? How's your week been? Oh, my week's been pretty all right. We've had a little bit of a bit of a, a low week. It's been a, a slight slight dip, but mm -hmm. uh, it happens as as it goes all the time. Um, but. But overall, I've been uh, been hard at work, sort of in the uh, in the background, working on some some background stuff, working on some new scenes, uh, some new ideas, and myself. And the mods have been sort of talking a bit more and sort of how we can sort of improve the stream and making more observations of where we can sort of improve and kind of kind of help that engagement and in turn kind of help kind of help the growth that we've been seeing a lot of and seeing what's been happening because we. They're not like things are going in a really good direction. And I'm, I mean, I'm sure everybody might be experiencing some sort of effect by it, but with daylight savings changing all around the world, time zones, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's going to be some sort of effect. So not, I'm not letting it hit me too hard, but I'm really excited for some of the changes that I'm going to be bringing in, including uh, a little uh, somewhat reactive, uh, little overlay that I'm going to be, I'm creating oh. from scratch. Oh, look um, at you! In After Effects and stuff like that, so I'm very excited uh, for that. I, I, um, it's gonna be sort of like a, like a little. I'm gonna instead of keeping myself in the corner, like kind of, I'm kind of gonna be transitioning to like sort of with you, Reaps, how you mm -hmm. have your little banner underneath your your camera, which yeah. allows you to kind of position yourself anywhere on the screen. Yes. So that's that's kind of where I, I want to sort of transition, kind of give me a bit more flexibility and freedom. And, where I kind of have myself on screen. That's so. awesome, man. I have like an yeah. extra scene. So I've got my stock standard left and right scene, like I'm on the left on the right. And then I've got another scene, like a modular scene where I can just drag the camera anywhere in case, you know, things are really pertinent at the bottom of the gaming screen that I'm doing there. So I think it's a really smart move. Yeah. To other than just be a floating person, but maybe you could put like a cloud yeah. underneath you. Like That's looking yet. down from above. I saw a, I saw a Dragon Ball Z uh, fighter Z or something. Like he was he did Dragon Ball Z tournaments, and that's what he had. He had the uh, Kami fly, uh, Kami cloud that you see that in Dragon so Ball cool. the original. <laughs> it was cool. very cool. It had like fully animated everything like that. 
It was very, very cool. It's see. smart. When you see that stuff, you're like, yeah, you put extra effort in. I don't like that. So, but Nick, that sounds really exciting. You know who man. thinks you put yeah. extra effort in? Yeah. I, I, one of my chatters, when I, when, we, when I first started shouting you out, Reaps, and like talking about and collabing with you, one of my chatters went and watched your stream during the day. Oh, yeah. And that night, that night they came up to my stream and they said, I'll tell you what, Reaps is constantly moving around. I mean, he's never looking at the same shot. Like, I, he's like, I'm watching him when he does, he's just chatting and he's going from wides to mediums to close ups. Even when he's playing a game, he's mm -hmm. on the left, now he's on the right, now yep. he's full screen, now he's big. And I said, yeah, he just live vision switches his entire fucking stream constantly. Yes. Um, which is wild. I've never seen a content creator put that much effort in. Thank you. It's um, more the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. So let it play out. But, the, but uh, that's like a that's like yeah. a classic like engagement tool, right? It like is. You don't, mm, you, it don't, is. Yeah. you don't stick on a, 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 a certain scene for more than uh, what's the, the rule of thumb with that? It's like, it's usually like three seconds. Um, or, but yeah. here's the, the big thing is that I learned when I did pr um, promotion. Uh, God, my old job, promo producing, right? We had to do mm. 30 second things. And you think 30 seconds, that's very, very quick and everything. But what nope. you notice is that there's some yeah. times that you have to do like a full, like here's a sentence and it goes for about four or five seconds. So what you do is you don't just leave it as a still frame. You do a slow zoom in, mm -hmm. like very subtle. They don't notice it, but it's always movement. And I guess that maybe that's like ingrained in my brain. So I have to keep moving. Maybe it's too annoying for some and whatever, but that's that, you know, it's always gonna, each stream is gonna be different. Yeah. No, I, I, you're you're spot on, right? Because yeah. I, I used to do editing all the time, yeah. and you learn how how long a few seconds actually is. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a there's a band called Ninja Sex Party. Um, Love Ninja Sex Party. They're, they're so, so good, right? good, man. One of my favorite songs, and one of the ones I relate to best, is Three Minutes of Ecstasy, uh, where it's all about <laughs> tell, how tell he, me what. <laughs> yeah, well, he can only he can only provide ecstasy for three minutes to his partner. <laughs> And, um, and he says, he says, you're not thinking, you, you, I know you're thinking three minutes isn't very long, but I promise you it's a long time or something. And then he starts counting and he goes, one, one thousands, two, one thousands, <laughs> three, one thousands, four, one thousand. He goes, and he's like, see, it's quite long, isn't it? You're tired of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That is a it's, great it's, way of looking at time in general. It's true, right? Like yeah. it's it's like like in a content creation. I honestly believe that's uh, the case. I was talking to Iona, and uh, she said that the thing she cares most about isn't necessarily her average viewers; it's her retention rate mm -hmm. because she knows mm. she'll consistently in her place in the category. She knows she'll consistently have new people coming in. So the trick is to make sure they keep going. And so she'll watch her stream back and check her retention rate and stuff like that. Which if you're curious, if you want to see your retention rate, you can go to your Twitch tracker, click on the stream. And at the bottom, it'll say how many unique or live views you got um, in the hours. And it can work out a rough retention rate. Now, that doesn't work for me or anyone on the front page of Twitch because you get like an extra 2000 live views that are just people scrolling through Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, but other people can use that. And it's really, it's a really good way of looking at it. It's like, how are you... How long are you keeping people in? And that doesn't mean you have to be like, whoa, uh, look at me, I'm a wacky <laughs> content creator. Um, it just means you have to fit your key demographic, right? Please, like some people, please be that for one stream. Yes, <laughs> me. Hello, everybody, it's Hi, me, kids, LJ. I got a balloon. <laughs> balloon. <laughs> like this crazy sound. Bajo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a joke. It's a full joke. I love Bajo with all my heart, okay? Um, Bajo, Bajo is just a very, very, very wacky creator. That's he all. is. He's like um, insanely good at it. Mm -hmm. Wild, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's amazing. It's um, honestly next level. The, 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 work, the, the amount of work to rec like for, to record himself doing every single thing that he's done and then edit yeah. it into the stream. He's like he's a terabyte of just like alerts that he has as like you know mm. videos and everything. It's honestly he's it's next level. He's so good. Like, because <laughs> really, I got all these. The reason stream elements have to buy another server. <laughs> <laughs> I think he moved. I think he moved to Streamlabs. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. He he mentioned a while ago that he was using a new alert system and he was trying it out. It was Streamlabs, I believe, which is weird. I did not expect it. Um, yeah. Um, because I just assumed because I know he was with Stream Elements originally, and then yeah. he, he said on a stream, he goes, "Alerts might be a bit broken because uh, we're trying out a new one on Streamlabs." I don't know if he moved back, but this was this was. I was really shocked to hear it because I know that alert variations in Streamlabs kind of suck. Yeah. Yeah. You get there's, there's no like there's barely any flexibility to it. That's yeah. why a yeah. lot of people like you don't elements. have that green screen there or the you know the canvas that you can like right the canvas is so yeah. powerful. So yeah. Important. So I don't know. It, yeah. Maybe he misspoke, but that's what he said, or maybe he was making a joke. But it seems really genuine. It was really surprising. Interesting. Um, mm. But on the topic of uh, engagement and retention rate and stuff, that pretty much leads into my week. I've been sick, so I haven't uh, been live. I went live once. And uh, really, really interestingly, um, and you guys are gonna be like, that's not interesting. This is obvious. You shouldn't be surprised by this. Um, but remember how I always talk about the fact that 
people I'm most active in just chatting and most people come for my just chatting and then they disappear during the game because mm -hmm. which is a, everyone always says it's a good problem to have. And I'm like, well, you know, it's still a problem to have. I'd like people to like to watch me. Um, <laughs> But uh, but um, I went live and I was really unwell. Like you could tell I was really unwell. I was pumping streps and stuff. I had to go live though in my head because I'd already missed uh, three streams. And if I missed a fourth one in a row, especially with the weekend, that would be seven days where I wasn't in people's minds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I went live and I, I went live for about four hours. For the first three hours of that, literally all I did was just chat. I just sat there doing just chatting and just being myself, making jokes. Cause I was like, the only goal of this stream is just to have some fun and to remind people that I exist, right? Mm -hmm. Because Twitch chatters, I've said this to you before and I'll say it again, you're goldfish, okay? Mm -hmm. if, you if you do not see my face every day in some form, you will forget I exist and you'll go off and you'll go watch someone else, right? Um, and um, if you're a streamer, you should really honestly believe that. You should think like that to a degree, which is yeah. why like YouTube and TikTok and everything like that and Discords are so powerful and Twitter because you're constantly reminding people, hey, I exist, come to the stream. Yeah. Um, um, but I, essentially I went live and I, for the first three hours, I, I just had the goal in my mind of, I just want to have fun and remind people I exist. I had my like highest organic, no raids average viewers without front page either. So front page usually gives you about 15 to 30 extra viewers coming in because naturally people see you on the carousel. Um, that's average. Um, but I got to like 150 with zero front page, with wow. zero raids. And that's, you know, maybe it's not the highest I've ever had, but from just doing chatting, like no bits, no anything crazy, just me just there talking, making jokes, telling stories. And I was kind of like, wow, okay, yeah, this is a big reminder for me that if I'm authentic and myself and just do my thing. A lot of people are keen to just come in for the personality that I, that I exist, which was yeah. um, a big that, surprise. And then I switched to Geo Guessr because like, yeah. I got a 300 person raid from Shalaluya, who's a lovely egg. Mm. Um, and so I switched to Geo Guessr and fucked around for an hour and a half and then realized, oh, I'm going to die. I feel really sick. I need <laughs> yeah. to hop off. <laughs> Get out of there. Get out. <laughs> Next God. day I woke up, had no voice, like no voice. Um, <sighs> wow. But, but, uh, it sounds like, it sounds like my, how my booster shot knocked me out on Friday. Oh, really, I man? Dead, oh, yeah, yeah, I was basically dead to the world. I had to I had to force myself to get, like, I had to go drive to work because I had to, I was rossed to do a full day. Uh -huh. So I had to go and do retail for like an hour before one of my coworkers managed to come in. And he's like, you're all right, my mum barely standing. <laughs> <laughs> Drove home, <laughs> passed out for 12 hours. 12, yeah. dude. Yeah. Fuck, yeah, okay. I've been yeah. very lucky with the shots myself. Like, I think they're all fires are the ones that I've gotten. And mm -hmm. I've, 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 maybe one day I felt like a little bit, not 100%, but I was being pretty good in terms of my reaction to them. So knock on wood for the fourth one. It made one. me feel stronger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. damn. I, 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 every day, every day different. This is seriously, every day, like, I've, I, I was feeling a little unwell. I got the shot. I felt like a thousand bucks. I felt huge. I'm not saying it correlates. I'm just saying that I'm built different. Yeah. <laughs> You're and built then, different. And then yeah. and then the second shot, again, I was feeling a little unwell, got my second shot. I came back. I went for like a twenty five thousand step walk and felt like a thousand bucks, right? I was like, I'm good to go. Yeah. And then on the third one when we got the booster, I went with my wife to get the booster at the same time because we could just easily go do it. And we we go in there. The funniest thing is that we walk in, we're in line, both in our masks at the mask center. And um, the guy in front is talking to the nurse who's at the desk and he's not wearing a mask. He's taking it down to try to talk to her. And she's like, so can you just put it back? <laughs> and, and, and he's like, yeah, yeah. She goes, I can't find your appointment to get your vaccine. He goes, he's like, oh, no, no, sorry. I should have clarified. I'm not here to get my vaccine. I'm here because I'm pretty sure I'm positive for COVID and I have a test booked for the afternoon. But I wanted to see if I get it earlier. And she goes, sir, you, you can't be here until after 12. This is when people come in to get the vaccine. You aren't supposed to be here till like in the afternoon. That's why we have them separate. And he goes, yeah, but can I just wait around and get it now? She's like, oh sir, please put your mask on and please leave if you think you're COVID positive. He goes, no, I'm pretty sure I am. I, I spent four hours with someone who has COVID. She goes, when? He goes, three days ago. And she goes, sir, you need to go home and isolate. <laughs> And this whole time, this whole time, Claire and I just stood behind him in line, like 1.5 meters distance, wearing a mask, just slowly backing <laughs> further up to the wall, just like hands in the air, panicked. What um, the hell is wrong yeah. with people? Oh How are but, they that inept? I, but like we, so McClare and I, Claire and I both get the vaccine and we go home, right? And within like four or five hours, she's suddenly feeling so rough. Like mm. rough, rough. Me, I'm I'm feeling like I'm built like a brick shit house again. And um, I don't know why it is. I don't know what it is. And she's laying on the couch feeling terrible, right? That night. And I walk over, can I get you anything? Do you want anything? She goes, oh, I don't know what, how I've gotten so sick. I don't know what's going on. And I said, well, it's probably because you got the booster and it's known for, you know, being rough. 
Um, that's that's pretty casual, pretty normal. Everyone knows it. And she goes, yeah, but if it was the booster, why haven't you got sick? And our husband of the year award goes to me. I look <laughs> her in the eye and I just say, because I'm built fucking different. And I walk away. <laughs> You never saw her again. Oh. You just, like, just woke up to the sunset. Haven't. Gone. God. Just gone. I don't know where she is. We, we, we miss you, Claire. Hopefully you can find your way back to... to I'll miss you. <laughs> Please. Please um, come back. Um, I, so the only other thing uh, that's happened this week is I've been working really heavily on the YouTube videos since I've not been able to stream. Um, so I recorded. I've got like five videos recorded, right? Like five videos recorded. I deleted an entire video today because I didn't feel like the take was good enough on it. So I'll re-record that one. But I released one of the, I released one of them last night, and it's doing really, really, really well. Um, people are being really positive about it. Um, I find that the more harsh or critical I am, like I, again, this video I tell people near the end, stop making excuses. You know, like I show like Point Crow and Small Ant and the content they were doing when they had zero to fifteen average viewers, and I say they don't have fancy editing, they don't have all this stuff. You know, stop making excuses. Just because you have zero viewers doesn't mean you can't sit down and do like a really cool video concept, right? Yeah. Like YouTubers have been making cool video concepts for years without a chat. You don't need a chat or viewers. Um, and I feel like anytime I'm like overly harsh or critical or like I really get down to the grassroots and say, hey, look, there, you can't make an excuse here. People usually are a little bit more critical in their replies back. But this time, everyone's actually taking it really on board, being like, you know, you're 100% right. I, I am making an excuse. Um, apart from one guy who was like, I feel like you just make the same video every single week, which I thought was a great feedback because I was like, you know, that's a good question. Am I making the same video every single week? He said, you don't make anything new anymore. So I went and looked at my channel. And last week's video was a news video that I've never done before. The one yeah. before that was a video all about how to do TikTok, which I've never done before. <laughs> the week before that was a video about whether you should stream on Twitch or YouTube, which is a video I've never done before because I wasn't confident enough to do it. The one before that was about quitting YouTube and I've never made a video about that before. The one before that, you know what, I'll give it to you. It is about how to get more chatters. I haven't covered it as a whole video, but I have talked about it. But the one before that, it's all about how only 1% succeed and what the hardest part is. Haven't covered it. It's all it. the same. I don't, I, you just yeah. said mate, the same video. I don't yeah, know. I'm just hearing the about. same words over and over, LJ. <laughs> you need to step it up, mate. Listen to your it's, own it's, video. I, 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 I was so close to replying back to him. Hey, I know you think I do the same video every few weeks, but it's really just you only click on the ones where there's a big zero viewers uh, thumbnail. That's yeah. all it is, buddy. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You're not clicking on the ones about how to diversify your content or the ones about how you shouldn't do giveaways or the ones where I'm like, talking about three brand new features that have come out on Twitch. Like, and I'm like, sat there, I'm like, okay, cool. I can instantly disprove this, but it's just like, I don't understand. I don't understand why people are like, you're just making the same thing every single week. Well, if you go look at it, go yeah. look at it, you know, have, have exactly a proper right. look, open yeah. your eyes, <laughs> yeah. show yourself. Who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll name and shame. It's not, <laughs> 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 I think you it is find. funny though. Right. Because because as a content creator, we have to niche very hard. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly believe that if I wanted to, I could probably... So this video that I've released this week is performing aggressively well. So in this time period of a video release, it'll normally get... Um, uh, sorry, like it goes, to, as I always say, ranks one to 10, right? Yep. This video this video release is currently at 8,000 views in the first 10... Sorry, the first 11 hours. The next closest two that are ranked two and three of the last 10 releases are uh, three free tools you need to grow your Twitch and 32 easy tips to grow from zero viewers, which are both 6.5 to si and 6.6K. So we're about 13, 1400 views higher in the same time period. Wow. And both of those videos in the second and third went viral. So the 32 tips got 800,000 views in half a year and the three free tools got 230,000 views in the first 30 days Ooh. or something. Damn. So I'm so I'm sat here like fuck fuck please 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 just blow <laughs> Come up, blow on, up, man. Come on. blah 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 because this video as well I honestly am super proud of it yeah I, I'm like I'm like really really proud of this video because I think yeah I've covered before the three major mistakes I talk about in this video but I don't think I've covered them in a way that is as educational as this mm -hmm. which is like a rule I have it's like if I'm gonna cover the same topic I have to bring it in a way that is better you know what I mean like if I'm gonna talk about something I've talked about before I want to make sure I'm using my the things I've learned about how to educate, uh -huh. right? So like my 32 tips video is inspired by a video that I released a year and a half ago called how to stream to zero viewers, right? And then the 32 tips video is using the exact same core packaging and concepts and stuff like that. But I think I'm teaching it 
in a better way. 32 tips that you should how to stream to zero viewers. I think you learn more in the new video than you did in the old video. Um, and that's why I repeat. And um, you are offering like something new as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's always, it's always a, a new form, but I, I have, I'm very aware in my brain that not everyone has had the opportunity to go and watch 70 other videos that I've released across a year and a half. Yes. Right. So covering the same things here and there isn't a bad thing to do. It's actually a really good thing to do because there are new people getting into this all the time and the YouTube algorithm de-optimizing old videos all the time. It's like, imagine if you're a university lecturer and you're like, why would I have to do another lecture on this topic? I taught that last year. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, no, there are new people coming in. You need to educate them the same way. But because you've got better experience about what teaches, you can do it in a better way now. Yes. Um, and also, as we said, it's an ever evolving landscape um, streaming. Mm. So there's always going to be new bits and bobs that you can throw in there that weren't you know, pertinent in the last video that you did. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yep. Um, and so I think it's uh, I think it's really interesting uh, that that someone who's like subscribed to me now for like a year is like, you just make the same content over and over because it's like, no, I just have similar packaging uh, and similar structure. Yeah. Um, but the reason I brought this up, sorry to clarify, and I'll do it shortly, uh, quickly, is that the retention rate on this, I experimented with a huge amount. So on this video, I experimented with the retention rate by in the very first like 30 seconds. I, I normally show clips in the first 30 seconds because I think it's engaging and it gives evidence of promise. But in this one, I, I spent the first 10 seconds using subtitles, really animated popping in subtitles. Um, and the so far the retention rate for it has been really good okay like really really good because people talk about using subtitles all the time yeah i felt it was a more of a thing you'd do for gaming videos yeah but i tried to implement it here and it's fucking it's done really like well for those first 30 seconds it's like 15 seconds of poppy subtitles with a really intense emotive statement with really good music beneath it yeah and then it goes into using clips uh to back up the really intense statement and then what I've done is I got rid of my intro stinger where around like 30 second mark, I go the little stream scheme stuff comes up, which a lot of people say is bad, but I personally find it hasn't limited my uh, growth whatsoever. And then rather than uh, normally after the intro stinger, I'd be like, hey, I'm LJ from streamscheme.com. There's a link to the description. Come check me out. And then I do an intro to the video, a promise, and then the ad read, right? And that's the structure that's gotten me to where I am today. But I'm slimming all of that down. So the new structure is... Like literally the 30 second hook with all the graphics, the subtitles, everything, and then no stinger intro. And I just go, Hey, I'm LJ. And the hardest thing about today's video, rather than like all the other stuff about check me out while I'm live. And then, um, I, I, I tell them there are time codes. I tell them the promise. And then I say, I'm going to do an ad read and I do the ad read. And so the first two minutes establishes the entire, or the first minute establishes the entire video, everything they're going to receive, all of the promises, the intense emotional statements, the engagement. And then I have a minute ad read, which is like if I didn't have that minute ad read, the retention rate would be fucking wild, I right. reckon. But the minute ad read is what makes it so I can keep this content free. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's exactly. important, man. It's important. Yeah, it, well, and it's people really use cool ad reads as well. Like they used yes. to like the in video ad reads. But I feel like everything you've did, you've done you, you, that you said you did for this video is this is the equivalent of mentally grabbing someone's head and going, look at me, look at me, don't look away. Yeah, right. Don't look away. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, you good? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah keep watching. Like, that's my, it. Like, my, wife, my wife was like, the subtitles are always moving, so it's kind of hard to like really focus on and read, but like it's catching my eye, but it's like, I'm, I, I, could you slow it down a bit? And I said, no, because the whole concept <laughs> is I'm supposed to make them really just like, okay, yeah. what is this saying? What is happening right now? Like, because you can listen mm -hmm. and kind of absorb content, but you won't really absorb content. But the subtitles force you to go, oh, okay, I'm 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 actually watching, I'm listening, I'm yes. not gonna be disengaged. I'm I'm paying attention. And um, you, it's interesting you brought that up because I see Ludwig doing it as well for the first 30 seconds, it's subtitles. And what people yeah. don't realize as well um, that the subtitles are useful for is sometimes when you scroll over a video, it doesn't play yes. with sound. It just does like a, you know, the first, you know, here's what's going on. And when you see those subtitles, it's like, oh, that's what he's talking, that's what this person's talking about. Yeah, I so want to get into that. And you click on it rather than just like a mime show happening in the background. So yeah. I think that's really interesting. And take notes, people. If you're at home and you're yeah. doing YouTube, take bloody notes. Let's do some freaking subtitles in the first 30 seconds. Well, so I've noticed I thought it was, oh, there you go. I was just saying, I, just, I noticed like when you do that, that, that hover thing on YouTube, like the, the auto YouTube captions automatically. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say as well. well. Yeah. 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 I've watched entire three minute videos from hovering. So, so <laughs> yeah. I. So I. I, I'll like hover around the homepage and I'll be like, oh, I'm kind of interested in this, but not enough to click it. Here's yeah. three minutes of, I watched three minutes of 
videos that I would never actually click on. Yeah. So I watched a three minute video of um, where are they now of the Modern Family cast. I don't watch <laughs> Modern Family. I'm not interested in it whatsoever. I don't even know the cast, but I hovered over it. And then I, I did the same thing. I hovered over a um, where they were when they started to where they were when the show ended of the middle which is that like Malcolm in the Middle ripoff yes. that came out yeah. years yes. later. Yes. I'm like, why did I just watch without any audio hovering over it on the homepage? Yeah. A fucking five minute video about a show I've never watched and don't care about. The the best part is that it's like this big. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, it's tiny. <laughs> We're so does lazy. We don't even view? want to click on it. We're just like, ah. Oh, it does. It does count as a view. It does count as a view because I went to my history to look it up and there was a fucking video that I'd hovered over in my history saying I watched it in full. That's crazy, okay. man. There you go. So it does it's count wild. as a view. So what, how, how long do you reckon? So if I hover over something and it's like only two seconds hovering, like there's a bit of movement and then I hover off, would that count as a view, do you reckon? Or is it like it's got to be a specified time for it to be considered a view? I wonder. Yeah, because that know. could like, tank that retention, like some right? Sort of click. Yeah. Yeah, like, is that like, is that a click on into the video technically? Cause you've hovered over it. Yeah. I don't know. That's so, mm, it's a weird I reckon one. It probably, I reckon it probably takes a while. Okay. I reckon it probably takes a while. And I reckon the retention rate doesn't touch or hurt or affect the video either. Okay. That's a good thing. The CT, CTR will be touched probably a hundred percent. I reckon. Right. Okay. Mm, well, it's very, it's very, very interesting, but Hey, that's uh, that's my week. Just doing YouTube retention, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, it's been interesting. I'll see how this video goes. I hope it pops off and goes, uh, goes really, really well. Um, after, after the podcast, go watch the video and yes, share it. Yes. Go do it. Yeah. So it's got yeah. like a, what a must close to like a plus 20% on your previous two, as you said, the viral videos uh, that went through views, views are up 23% more than 23% uh, more. Uh, because regular viewers are choosing to watch this video, helping to increase its reach on YouTube recommendations. Nice. Um, and YouTube suggests they say, what's going on? Well, the topic, the title and thumbnail of the video attracts more regular viewers to the channel. It's more likely to be recommended to viewers watching similar videos on YouTube Home and Up Next, which is true. Like this video is is very targeted to my largest possible niche, aka beginner streamers worried about making mistakes, focused in on that. Like mm -hmm. it's very much targeted towards them. Unlike like a TikTok video, for example, which is me diversifying, which always gets no clicks because people don't want to diversify, mm -hmm. um, at least on TikTok. Um, so the video has got an 8,000 compared to 5,200 to 6,500 in this time frame, uh, which is the average. Um, and the click-through rate, uh, regular viewers of the channel chose to watch this video 8.3% more than the regular, which is normally 6.1 to 7.1%. And people are going to be like, hmm, OJ, your click-through rate is quite low there. It's actually pretty accurate for my genre and my niche that's about what we get because you know whatever yeah. everyone's different there was a fa family channels try and get 20 percent ctrs which is wild isn't it i can't I, that's a topic as well but family channels uh, that's um speaking of fake uh that's <laughs> yeah. what i mean sorry <laughs> speaking of fake speaking of fake uh, <laughs> sorry i pay these people to pretend to be my family <laughs> <laughs> can't stand it. Can't it. stand it. Um, well, say, Reap's your week. How my was it? How okay. Was... So I, I've got a week for you boys and it's you, you're going to like one of the stories here. So okay. my week has kind of been all over the um, shop. As we talked about beforehand, LJ saying, you know, it's always... Um, uh, do we all feel this, that when you have a sick day or just a day that you've got to like figure, uh, sorry, move around your bloody uh, stream times, that you feel a little bit guilty. You're like, I, I, I should have been there on the day. I'm hoping that the people can come back in. And, and you're just like, I need to make it up to them somehow. So it was that week for me. Um, Thursday, I had to do this Twitch event. So it was like a, it was like a branding thing. Um, and I met, you know, the Twitch staff there. And basically I went on stage for about seven minutes. And it was like a and a of like, how do you do brands, da, 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 to all these potential, you know, brands or um, existing brands. I won't go too mm -hmm. much into it because it's really not um, uh, too great for obviously the podcast. But what I will say is that when I was there, let's just say one of the Twitch staff was like, yo, uh, Reaps, are you leaving soon? I was like, oh, I'll be leaving in a bit. And, and they're like, can I talk to you before you leave? And I was like, mm -hmm. sure, I could definitely do that. So I went over to said person and they looked me in the eyes and they go, so you get on your knees. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this took a turn. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> and let's just say that I'm the number one Twitch streamer out there now because of what I yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got they, that 70, 30 cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, they, 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 they said, um, it reaps. Um, what if I hypothetically listen to a podcast 
And I went... <laughs> because if you listen to last week's so or the week before's podcast, we did hypothetical situations about hypothetical we did sponsorships. Hypothetically, yeah. We did cover yeah, some hypotheticals. So, and I was like, oh, I would say that <laughs> is a good... Thing that do <laughs> listen to the podcast um but no they were very very kind and they just said we didn't realize how much um like you you went through stress and you know anxiety and things before these streams so they literally like reached out to me going you shouldn't feel that way obviously here's this that and the other but it was that really nice thing of like they're listening to the podcast they're listening to feedback from us and they're trying to yeah. address the issues like they literally said to me, how can we make this better for you in the future, even if we do um, sponsorship, sponsorships and the like? And I was like, that is very, very cool. So That's um, awesome. Yeah, it was very nice this, to them. This only happens in ANZ. Yeah. I want right. to throw this out there. I'd say 99% of our listeners are America. I just want you guys to know, you will never have an experience like that ever as a content creator, even if you become giant. Mm -hmm. I, I've spoken to people who have like 2,000 viewers and they're in the NA, and they have never once spoken to a single Twitch representative um, uh, same with the UK, UK partners really struggle because all that gets tweeted out over there apparently is football. So I've got to throw it out there. ANZ region, Twitch, yep. are literally the best region in the entirety. If you want to be a streamer, move to Australia, yep. become a partner Straight up. here. Yep. Legitimately, the team are immense. Uh, they're fantastic. They put on such amazing events. Like I don't want to go into it because I don't know what we're allowed to say fully, mm -hmm. but like I've been to events in the ANZ partner discord, which are just not like big fancy things that is run by purely just one Twitch staff member who has experience in marketing. And it's just been like a huge eye opener, right? Yeah. Like I, I, there are entire videos that are purely just inspired by the fact that I like, I get the opportunity to ask questions in events, like nowhere else. Twitch ANZ are a hundred percent the best. And when someone asked me once, someone asked me once, they said, is there, is Devin Nash said, is there any reason to be a Twitch partner? Um, he couldn't think of one. And I said back, I don't know about Devin, but one of the biggest reasons to be a Twitch partner for me is the fact that I'm in the ANZ region, which crushes every other region. Yep. Um, I, I yeah. back that completely because when you meet these people and when you get the feedback through emails and something, they are they are in there. They are making sure that everything's fine. You have Discord meetings mm -hmm. with them. You go and talk to them, video conferences, everything like that. You pitch ideas. They go yes, no, indifferent. You know, they, mm -hmm. they're really um, receptive to feedback. And it may seem like we're sucking up. And you know what? Call, call me a suck up then because this is the honest to God truth. Every time I go in there, I'm like, okay, I feel ready to do this rather than in just, mm -hmm. here's, a, here's a brief for you. Do it with it what you will. There's no feedback afterwards. They give you feedback. They give you everything. And they're really, really nice people as well. Genuine. They want to make it bigger and better. I can't say what I saw on there because it is, you know, behind NDAs and stuff. But they've got big, big plans, not just encompassing of gaming, but like music art food mm -hmm. everything this year so i um, very excited uh for y'all to see it when it when it does um eventuate so and yeah they can't say we're suck ups because all three of us have said this before we knew they listened. i know before we do that <laughs> listening yeah, they they yeah. called it's us like, out like on it one of the first podcasts all we did was rant about the fact that we are so lucky to be in this region but with all that being said uh we've gotten a little off track reaps do you have anything else you want to talk about in your week or shall we accuse people of being fake well, yes, we shall. But before I do, um, there was one more thing is mm -hmm. I had to go to a wedding, which is why I was saying that I always feel guilty when I have to, you know, shuffle things mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. And Multiple, I was like, how can I make it up to people? And the wedding was on April Fool's Day. I mean, less said the better. But on April 2nd, April is April 1st in America. And I've got a very American uh, audience, I'd say majority of them made up. So I was like, what can I do for April Fool's? So what I did... <laughs> is I made a VTuber of Reaper. And I VTubed for the day um, as, as Reaps. How did uh, I miss this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Was, this was back then. It was only like a three and a half hour stream. It was like, uh, we just played marbles. But yeah, I did a VTuber for the day for April Fool's. And um, then uh, on Sunday, we played Spooks, which is great. People, you're definitely right. Spooks is, Spooks is my jam. And then yesterday, I was, I was at an end. I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm so run down. Like, this week's been crazy. What am I going to do for my Monday stream? And I just came up with on a whim. Tell me your most embarrassing stories. And I had so many people typing in the chat. It was like this kumbaya moment of getting all of this baggage off of us. And it just oh felt good, goodness. man. It felt really, really good. Excellent. That's yes. awesome. This yeah. VTuber model is fucking cool. Yeah, you like How it? cool yeah. is it? It was awesome. I was chatting to Evie and then she was like, oh my God, the Reaps' April Fool's gag was amazing. And I was like, what? 
People hate it. They're like, we want the real reaps. And then when I came back, they're like, bring on the, because we called it reaps yeah, 317. Reap <laughs> reap 317 back on. So yes, but speaking of fake, that's the most fake thing, uh, the VTuber model. <laughs> so let's go on with other fake things. So this uh, whole episode was supposed to be about being fake. Yes. Um, and it's actually been inspired by a commenter who asked us a question because obviously you guys ask us questions and we will do some question answering in a little bit. Um, but they asked us about, uh, I'm not going to read the entire thing because it's a very big question, mm -hmm. but essentially, um, nutty chili said, I think I have a good Q and a question for you. When you're live, what is more important creating entertainment or authentic expression? If you guys watched your stream back, how much of it is authentic expression versus how much of it is creating entertainment and quality content? Um, which I think is a really cool concept, a really cool question. Agreed. Um, and I, it's been in my head for, all, for the last few weeks before this question was even asked. And I think I've talked about it a bunch of the podcast. Mm. But I have a theory and I am curious what you guys think about it. So I think that up until about six months ago, I was pretty much, a, I was doing a very authentic expression. I was just being myself and I hadn't really fallen into the trap of feeling like I had to do a certain thing yet. And I was heavily just doing my jam, right? Yep. Um, however, about six, seven months ago, you'll see, I start to dip. And around that time, three major things happened. One, I started, uh, feeling like I'd hit a ceiling at the 200, 250 average viewers. Two, I started having like three or four trolls decide that on like every comment or everything like that, they'd try and say that I was clearly too happy and I was clearly too fake and stuff like that, which I've talked about before. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing that happened was, um, I started feeling like my streams didn't have enough uh, content to be turned into videos or that my content wasn't good enough to be packaged up as a video. And so I started changing all these things and trying. To, I tried to be better for videos. I tried to um, shift things up so I could break through that ceiling. Um, I, I changed who I was because I started feeling like, okay, maybe I am faking. Like, who knows? I don't know. I thought I was just being myself, but maybe I am fake. And so I started feeling like maybe I shouldn't come in like this or do that. Or maybe I shouldn't make this joke because, you know, and I talked about last week about how I felt like I had to bat 100. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I had to bat 100. And I feel like I started getting more worried about having to bat 100 as well and make sure that all my jokes were perfect. And so I think over the last six or seven months, this is going to sound weird. I think I've become more fake. Mm -hmm. I think my reactions have been less genuine because uh, I think like not I'm not lying. But I think they've been less genuine because I've been worried about coming across as fake. I've been worried that my content isn't good enough. So I've been having to play it up more. And I've been worried about, um, about other things that I've just talked about. And I think that the days where I haven't worried about any of that are the days my content has been at its best. The first stream back in the new year, the, well, the first like week back in the new year, the, um, the, 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 the other Wednesday night where I was telling you about where I was sick for the first few hours. And, and I just had got 100 of the average viewers from literally sitting here being myself um, or, or, or the cooking event or these event streams where like, I don't have to worry. I feel confident in myself to just be myself. Those are the nights where I just feel like I'm back to where I was eight months ago. And you, my, my viewers, my retention rate, all of it reflects that. And so this question I think is so cool because I think that most partners and most streamers like myself will go through this time period where they lose their focus and where they lose their authentic expression. And I, I, I believe that for my first year and a half, I was a much more authentic person. And that's why people uh, gravitated towards me. And I think that I'm getting back there. Nice. That's a really good way of putting it for sure. Yeah. The beautiful uh, emotional that story. That was a be beautiful journey Make a is movie. what it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. I cried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally shitting and pissing and crying right now. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do a but zoom in. Yeah. But like, that's the thing, right? Like, I feel like that's the thing. Like, as we grow and it becomes a job, we lose our authentic expression mm -hmm. because we're trying to make it as entertaining as possible. Yes. I don't know if you guys have dealt with that. I know that I know that um, you're very much a showman, Reaps, but yes. I think it's not like it's a fake showman. Um, and I know that, Nick, you just do your thing. I think you're still in that kind of stage where you're like, where you're just doing your thing and you love it and it's great and that's awesome, which... I think you do. Like, I think you're one of the most genuine people I watch, uh, Nick. Oh, and, thank you. Mm. And I, I, I don't know. I feel like everyone eventually goes through a part where they do, they do become a little bit more fake. And I think that's part of the partner slump. Is this weird? No, I think you're, you're dead on the money. I think there comes a time, you know, like you can look at it any avenue of life. If you're at a job, if you're in a relationship, there becomes a time when it's just 
things change. I'm not saying, you know, for the better or for the worse, but there's something that you need to do to kind of like, I've done this for so long and I'm doing the same thing every time that you you, you shift. You don't realize you're shifting, but you shift a bit mm. in terms of how you act and how you respond to things. Mm. And don't get me wrong, there's times where I've definitely hammed it up to the nth degree. There's times where I've been completely genuine, I feel. And I feel like the times that I am genuine is the more times that people are engaged and there is that kind of... Um, uh, a rapport there because I know when it's like I have to force a conversation to get chat moving and stuff it it feels forced like it's just it's it's a forced movement and uh you you bring up a very good point in terms of I do notice that when I do, do have slumps it's because I'm either not in a great headspace or I'm just you know burnt out or something that I then try and make up for that feeling tired by being more animated on camera. And sometimes people can be put off by that because it's like, you're not being your usual self. This is obviously, you know, uh, fake. Uh, but yeah, you, you, you're dead on the money there is there have there has been times because I can look at my channel and go, definitely gimmicked. There's, there's a gimmick of the channel where I'm a late night talk show host gimmick, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. I, I did set it up to the extent that I am being myself in an environment that is hopefully mm -hmm. uh, a bit more organic to that. I'm not playing a character yeah. of Dr. Disrespect. You're not Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, I'm not Jimmy Fallon, exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. just a guy behind a desk. You're, because you're I a nicer person. Hopefully. Funnier, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not I mean, as annoying. Like, rather than a gimmick, it's more of like, it's like you've set the premise. Yes. Like that's, yeah, it's, you've it's, set the premise. It's a talk it's show with chat. That's That was yeah. my whole premise of it. It's like, come mm. in here, I'll interview you, interview me. It's just, we're gonna chill back, relax and watch some crap. That, that was the whole gimmick of it, but I can still be myself. Um, hmm. And I, I know that people will come in and go, oh, he's making up for the fact that he's got no personality with this gimmick or with, you know, hmm. production or something like that. Everyone's hmm. going to have different views and that's completely fine. You may be right. But what I know is that my best, my best moments are definitely when I'm so excited to stream and I feel like it comes naturally. You know, when hmm. you click the button once and then you're talking and you look at like how long you stream for, it's been like two to three hours and you're like, holy I crap. I love it. It's gone yeah, that so was the fast. Wednesday. And then, yeah, yeah, and then there's other days where you click it and you're like, man, I'm putting so much energy and I'm so tired already. It must be like five hours. You look at it, it's 40 minutes and you're like, how the, what? I still got to go another few hours on this. Um, yeah, it, it's one of those things. Nick, how do you feel about it? Because yeah. maybe I'm completely wrong. <laughs> no, that's it. I think, especially because, especially from when you start creating content and then over the course of, of that kind of that beginning journey, yeah. you kind of build, you, you build your own confidence in your camera presence. Mm. And so that will def, def change how you're perceived by everyone. So it's like maybe, you know, uh, people who sort of discover you early on will kind of see that evolution. Yeah. Right. And some people might perceive that as, oh, he's trying to, trying to be a bit more fake. He's trying to, you know, be more over the top and this and that. So it's just like, sometimes it's just, it's just someone finding their, their feet, finding yeah. their footing for how they want to be perceived on camera because, um, I mean, if you go look at like, you know, some of my, you know, clips and VODs from like five years ago, you know, I am no, I'm nowhere near what I am now because yeah. I've built, had all this confidence and I've, you know, had all this sort of uh, experimentation kind of self-discovery of what I wanted to be uh, for my content and, and what I wanted to be on camera. Um, and, you know, you could ask anyone who's sort of hung out with me uh, IRL and it's just the only difference is that I'm a little bit quieter. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I'm the same yeah. person. It's just that, you know, when I'm when I'm sitting here, I'm able to be kind of, you know, a bit more bombastic and a bit more kind of kind of grab your attention. Um, I mean, some would say that I do the IRL anyway, because I'm just like, <laughs> but um, yeah, like I've always, you know, there's always the character streamers and then there's, yeah, and then just sometimes you're, yourself like, and and that's kind of how, that's why everyone has, that's why everyone's unique because yeah. everyone has a different personality. Some people are just more chill and they just kind of like to they just chill out and chat and whatever. And then you have more people, very high energy. It's just, it's, it's always going to vary. And I don't know, like it, it, people, I feel like maybe if people you tend to watch more kind of low, low vibe type of content and then they come across someone who's a bit more high energy. They're like, ah, oh, this guy, this person's clearly fake just because they're maybe yeah. it's just someone that they're not, not watching as often or it's not the type of content that they watch often. So they just immediately default to clearly fake. Yeah. Clearly you, you, no one should have this much energy. I've yeah. been, I've been, that's been happened to me before. They're like, where, Nick, where do you get this energy from? How, how you can't be this energetic. I'm like, yeah, no, nah, I just, I just love this. Just, yeah. Just love the shit. 
love, yeah. I love yeah, just, being funny I, and entertaining. I, I, know, I know you think that people on stream who are energetic are liars and fake, but no, they're doing their dream job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly right. It's this juxtaposition. You make, You brought up a really good point there, Nick, is that if you come from a background or you go to the uh, niche of, you know, uh, people who are more chilled out, kind of like, uh, like just a calm, chill place to go, and then say they raid somebody who's a lot more energetic, there will be that immediate thing of like, oh, well, this is completely a 180 of what I just watched. So it must be completely false. It must be fake. It must be, they're putting it on to try and do it. Um, but I, 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 I'd also like to ask the question because we know the big streamers, you know, Ludwig and you know, SQC and Pokemon and stuff, people can say that they are completely fake. But I wonder what they do when they do look at those character streamers like Dr. Disrespect, you know what I mean? Um, where it is a character. Obviously, it's a fake character, but it still, you know, gets a lot of views, a lot of retention rate. Do they then go, I will never watch a character because, again, I just want people being themselves? Or can they mm. go, no, this is a different form of entertainment, and I realize it's more scripted. Um, I realize it's more kind of uh, uh, exuberant. Uh, any, any word that you have to kind of say, this is a character, do you, do you think that they're turned off by that? Do you think that there are people who can watch both and realize that this is completely different forms of entertainment? This is the thing I've learned about this. And it may come across as harsh, but the thing I've learned is, is that um, there are always going to be people who are just are just out there to try and hurt people. Yeah. That's, the, that's it, right? They, they'll see something that doesn't appeal to them and they'll, they'll take that as a personal affront to say this doesn't work. Yeah. But... The majority of people are fine to go, oh, yeah, look, it's Dr. Disrespect or Granny or any of these character streamers. And then also be like, yeah, no, there's a completely different type of streamer, mm -hmm. Nick or LJ or Reeps, where they can just go hang out and like chat to them and, and whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is the loudest people are the ones who are going to aggressively criticize something that just isn't for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I just received a comment on SSN just then because um, I was going to pull up the stream room comments and I had to check the thing. And the comment was literally saying, your final tip in this is a bad take because uh, it takes like a year to get good growth and you shouldn't stop streaming after three months. Don't tell people to stop streaming. The final tip isn't even telling people to stop streaming. It's saying, stop doing the same thing over and over and over again and improve, right? Mm -hmm. And the loudest people are often the wrongest. Yeah. That's just a reality of it, right? Like, yep. um, and you'll get that, right? Like, so that's what I was saying about the people calling me fake because of who I am. And I'm not even a character. When people look at Dr. Disrespect and they're like, this is just a whole character and that's sick. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a hundred percent, like I think there are, the majority of people can watch people and know exactly what's going on is entertainment. Yeah. But the loudest majority are going to criticize and not understand and act like it's weird or, or, or have terrible takes on it. Yeah. I was also wondering, because you imagine that doing that every single day, like I can imagine for Granny, Dr. Disrespect, you know, like the, the, the streamers that really do play a character, that it would be so draining. You've got to get in costume, you've got to do everything, you know, and then you're in there and you are expected to be at a certain level each and every time. You know, Granny is very much like full energy and that's why I've noticed they do four streams a week and it's around four hours, the four hour mark, because anything more and you'll just be like, oh my God, what am I doing? Do you yeah. think there would ever be backlash if those character or people know as gimmick characters would then be themselves for a stream because they're like, I didn't, I didn't want to see you as, but I wanted to see you as this character. Can we think of like the opposite way? Because you know, there's us and then there's us being forced and people are like, you're being forced right now. You're being too, you know, not who you are. But then when you're a character and you go to being genuine, do you think there's that backlash on the other hand? Do you think webcams streamers are the same? Because they say that once you have a webcam, you can't turn the webcam off because yeah. then everyone's like, where's the webcam? Is that the same concept in a way that people are used to one thing? It's not necessarily that they dislike it or there's backlash. It's more just it's they're change. used to it and they don't. They don't I don't like change. No, <laughs> don't like change. no change. <laughs> I think I think it'd be a bit different because I think whether you like whether you, if you, I think it depends if you're just if you tell people like, oh, I'm just not streaming with a camera tonight or if it's a permanent change. Yeah. If it's a permanent, like, no, nah, I'm, I'm just ditching the webcam, no more webcam anymore. Yeah. But again, a lot of people are kind of, instead of doing that, uh, that the, the kind of, the, I guess, one of the, the awesome parts about how VTubing has exploded is that people can still have that camera presence while not kind of being, putting their actual face on on camera. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to move away from a webcam and I'm going to become a VTuber. But then you've yeah. had the opposite. There's been some people that go from being a VTuber and they just kind of want to be themselves yeah. on camera. But 
Um, one person does come to mind, Reaps, from uh, from what you brought up, um, and that's a Aussie stream by the name of Slipflow. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I know Slipflow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Um, so, played an old older man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he played like he so he had this like old man mask, and he had his whole premise of uh, of like the channel was like uh, kind of like this kind of bad, bad grandpa style dude. And he had like, he called his, his community, the pensioners. Yeah. Um, and uh, so he like for, yeah, for ages and he, and he created like, you know, like, so there was like the grandpa character and then he would inject himself in small parts, like not, not on stream usually, but in kind of like images or video and like him, him as a, as a person was like the grandson. Yeah. Um, And so, and he did that for so long, but then I think there was a shift. I think he just got, I guess a bit tired of it and he just shifted like he kind of kept the same branding for the most part but he just stopped streaming with the with the old man mask and it was just him on camera um and so he probably went th- he probably went through that where he was doing that for so long i mean i'm, I'm only assuming i haven't haven't spoke spoke to him like i, I know no, no, this is fact you've locked it in <laughs> everything <laughs> you're saying right now is fact crap Slick, I'm sorry. Um, like Slick's, like Slick's a great guy, but I haven't like spoken to him like specifically about this this uh, this topic. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I would, I would, you'd have to assume that like eventually it gets really draining. Yeah. And he just wanted, I guess it was now he's like, okay, well, I want to just kind of be myself. I don't want to have to keep putting the mask back on. How do I transition to just being myself mm. now again? And kind of like, I guess you can kind of story tell. It's like he's. The grandpa's give, given the channel to the grandson, which is himself. Mm, yeah, but yeah, it's it's you, tough. You know, you've you've reminded me of something one of our commenters said. One of our commenters said a while ago about uh, Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, now, if 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 you've ever seen the Ellen Show, then you know for a fact that's where comedy goes to die. It's the seventh <laughs> layer of hell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she said in her show that um, she hates, or she said that she hates about her show is she hates dancing. Mm-hmm. she hates that at the start of every show she has to dance because that's what it's set up as it gets her own hyped and that's how she started the show used to and she still has to do it to this day and she hates that she said in interviews how much she despises having to dance every time she starts and i feel like that's kind of the thing is like well why do you do it then well it's because that's what people know it for and that's what it is you know mm-hmm. and and that is a tricky part of it is how do you move away from those things like for example you know a much smaller degree we had heist uh we had heists in my chat where once a month i would change the heist to be a new little adventure where all the chatters could type exclamation mark heist space all and they would go into a draw to win points and the story could be like they're robbing a train today or or they're trying to steal my like you know tartar sauce and i murder them and stuff like that right like just chat based games yeah but then when i moved away from streamlabs to stream elements i never really could, i wasn't able to recapture the magic because suddenly it was exclamation mark join yeah. And it was all a little bit different and it's it's gone and now it has less engagement and people are like, well, I can't do the meme of exclamation mark high space all and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, and all that stuff. And that's totally fair, right? And I, I think that's another, uh, that's an example of it is that we get, people get used to these things. Mm-hmm. They get used to these concepts, used to these gimmicks, used to these ideas. And it's what, I, what we talked about a few weeks ago and I have this whole video that I want to do on it is that your gimmicks need to do what yours does reaps where it supports your core personality Mm -hmm. because i think reaps if you were like guys i'm going live and you were in that room right you're in that room you're in right now i think you'd still have the same average viewership because i I think your core personality i'm about to ditch (laughs) (laughs) it spent hundreds of dollars or some shit on a brand new just got this new studio (laughs) ah you know what let's put it in the yeah i (laughs) hate the green screen it it, it is supportive right like i think your i think your 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 systems and your gimmicks are supportive and I think that's one of the big takeaways that I, I think people should learn and understand is that I don't think anyone, you, you can tell when someone is going out of their way to try and be fake, yep. right? And I think you can tell when someone has authentic expression. And whether or not you're knowing that intrinsically or subconsciously doesn't matter because you can always tell when someone is fake. And I, I see this all the time with streamers, right? And this is one of my pet peeves with streamers. If someone writes a message and the streamer reads it out, okay? And they clearly don't understand the message. They don't understand the joke or the question Mm. or whatever it is. They laugh. And they'll they'll go, ha, yeah. And then they'll keep going. But you can so obviously tell they're just doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's such a pet peeve of mine. Or it's the same thing as like if they're trying to read every single message and they're not actually like listening to the messages. Like, oh, yeah, hey, Bobby Brown 43. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that as well. Hey, yeah, over there, I love that as well. And it's like it's it's, that to me is a pet peeve because I feel like it, it is... It's a, it looks like they're scared, mm-hmm. you know, it looks like there's a fear to it. I've read every message, but I, I, I did it because I just, I'm a whore for the attention. 
Like I love the engagement and I love yeah. talking yeah. to them and stuff. And I understand that's why others do it as well. But I really hope I didn't come across as as that because if I didn't understand something these days, I'm usually like, what are you talking about? I yeah. don't understand what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> like, especially if chat suddenly goes on about a random tangent that I have no clue what's going on. I'll look at chat and I'll go, sometimes I have no clue what you people are talking about. Are you watching a different stream? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> I, I think I was um, guilty of what you said before. There were times, especially in the earlier days where I just read something and laugh and, you know, do the pet peeve thing because you just want to be liked or, you know, want people yeah. to be engaged. <laughs> Please don't leave. Yeah, Please, I read your message. Like, Come on. I knew I need this. I need this for affiliate, you know, whatever <laughs> it is, that type of thing. I totally right? understand that really obscure reference. That yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. But mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> these days, my chat gets angry at me because they like they say something and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And it's something that I said five minutes back or I'm just, you know, my brain's not working as much and I can't put the links together. And they call I'm me so out on that and I call them on out. And, and it, I think it's a really nice thing. It's just one of these things of like... It's more authentic, right? Exactly. I'm being honest with you. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about um so yeah. i'm just going to continue on with my conversation that i'm having now and yeah it's 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 good you, just, you look at your oh, chat God. and you're like what the hell is a rusty trombone stop asking for <laughs> yeah, it what well, are you I, talking know that. I think we yeah. all know <laughs> oh yeah no i do that too like i'll say something reasonable. you do a like, rusty trombone a too good for you mate good for you <laughs> i'll do that like i'll ask a question and then literally like 15 to 30 seconds later someone will respond to it and be like, what are you talking about? Like, mm -hmm. And they're like, what do you mean? You just asked the question. Like, did I? <laughs> yeah, I forget. My, I'm, I'm a brain I, I of a goldfish, dude. My my brain's just yeah. just like jumping from, from next thing. And I'm just, I'm forgetting things that I said like yeah. 30 seconds ago. Yeah. It's my most terrible. guilty is, oh, can you press a one in chat if you like X or you want to do Y and press two in chat if you want to do X or you like, want to do Y, right? Like the two options. And then everyone will start posting it. And these days I pretty much consistently have to be like, wait, which was which? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and my mods are like, one was this. And everyone's like, one was like, well, everyone's like, why do you ask? You don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, guys, you don't understand. I'm on a, like, a, I'm built different. I'm on a firing on more <laughs> cylinders, you know, different. information is out there and it's out. And then I'm moving on. I have no so retention weird? rates. Yeah. And they're like, no, you're just a fucking idiot. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, that. Wait, <laughs> where? yeah, I was thinking as well, like in terms of the, the whole being fake thing, because when you go into a person's stream and you really know them in terms of you watch a lot of their content and then they, there's something different about them that day, you, you can pick it up, right? But I was just mm. wondering from like an escapism point of view, because when people usually go into streams, let's just say um, uh, character streamers or, or us, they expect a certain level of what we've done or what we bring, certain vibes that we do, right? But yes. what I, I think people forget is that we're all human. Um, and there are days where you just can't be that every single day. Then maybe as we have a bad day, then maybe as we have a really good day and the whole kind of vibe of how you stream kind of shifts a little bit. And yeah. I know that when there is that shift of like, you know, I'm just not feeling it this week, something bad's happened, or I, I don't know, I'm low on energy, that it, it, it is that I think a lot of people, streamers will be asking us, well, should I be streaming that day if I'm not what people believe? Or should I try something new on that day? You know, or will people view me as a fake or as a sellout or, or pushing through things? Because I know a lot of the time when I tell people I'm tired today, like this is, you know, pre-chat um, before the, the stream, they're like, well, don't stream then, go and rest. But obviously, as we talked about before, you can't just go and rest when this is your living. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to have a day off. You know what I mean? Like, uh, because that's to that's the you. Is that to the pub, to the pub. Yeah, exactly. I just, you know what, guys? Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go do the one stream this week because I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. Obviously, you've got to push through those moments, and I think that that is a time ample. Unless you're actually people. sick. Yeah, when yes. you actually I, will say, sick. I feel like I feel like people will hear this and be like, and be like, well, okay, so what do you what do you mean? And I'm like, no, no, no. Reeps is saying if you're just tired or a little bit like down, yeah. not if you're actually like coughing a lung up. And if I'm saying like if you got COVID, take the freaking streams off. You know what I mean? Like if you actually need to recover, you know, rest high all that stuff that you've already been told. But I'm just saying those days where you're like, oh, I, I only got the, you know, three hours sleep last night because of whatever reason. I will still go live that day, even though I know I'm not my 100% best because that sleep is on me. It's, it's not yeah. making me sick. It's just like, I'm going to be tired. But it's still yeah. like, how many times have you gone uh, to a job and you've had a late night out with friends, know you've gone to work the next day? You do it because obviously that's your job. Never. That's how you get paid. No, I'm no, Australian really and we don't do that. <laughs> we chuck a sickie, yeah, all right? Chuck, that's we, what we do. That's what we do. We chuck a sickie. If yeah, anyone doesn't know, that's a sick I was just day wondering, Do you think people, I don't think they, um, they would immediately go to that because I do feel like when you are seen on screen, you are a character, you are, you know, to them, you're a character because they don't know who you truly are. Nobody really knows. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that they go, oh, yeah, it's just, you know, that's OK, because we all have those days. Or are they like, no, I expect this certain level of what you've always, you know, brought? I don't know 
about being like, no, I expect this. Mm-hmm. But uh, so what I said at the start, here's a, probably a good example of what I said at the start. Okay. Is when I when I first talked about those six, seven months, when I started panicking, I tried to amplify the wrong parts of what I thought people liked about me. So for example, my intros used to be always really timed and really hype and stuff like that. And so I amplified that and I, I tried to double down on how powerful those intros were to get people hyped. And I, I spent a good few months like starting my intros being like full reverb. Hello, my boils and ghouls and blah, 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 blah. And uh, I made the intros bigger and more hype. Um, and then uh, when I came back in the new year, I, I had readjusted what I believe should be the level of uh, my energy and the level of my intro. So I'd readjusted it based on how I felt was more authentic to myself. And based on avoiding the fact that I had, I thought I thought I had elevated the wrong part of my personality with the microphone, as as Nick said so a few weeks ago, I'd held the microphone to myself, but I'd held it to the wrong part. I'd held it to my butt, you know what I yeah, mean, yeah. rather than the part people actually like. Um, well, people like my butt. Um, <laughs> I like um, your butt, LJ. Come on, yeah. thank you. I appreciate. A, it. I'm glad. Butt. Well, I've, I send you photos of it daily. I was going to say yeah. thank you, thank you for yeah. those, um, and also the rhino baiting as well, which I received. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, reaps really reaps midstream the other day. <sighs> Just a little small tangent. Reaps midstream the other day. I was so I did this video for Sound Alerts. They hired me to do a video for their channel, and so I had to play around with Sound Alerts. So I was I was filming some stuff for them, and I was testing some of the stuff while I filmed it on Reaps because he had his Sound Alerts up. And it was perfectly timed that Twitch had given me like 5,000 biddies to play with uh, after an event. And so I was using Reaps' sound alerts to play <laughs> fart sounds at different points. And he was watching a Nuke's Top 10 Scary Paranormal thing. Oh, no. And there are these people in the forest and they're all like running around like speaking in Spanish and, and, yeah. and, and, um, and being like, oh, look at this over here or that or that or that. And this girl, this woman in full headphones is like, stop, stop, stop. Do you hear that? And then I had played a sound alert of an awkward fart. So it was like, <laughs> at the perfect time in the silence, in the gap. And she's like, do you hear it? Do you hear it again? And it was the funniest it's shit It's clipped. It's ever. clipped. It's going to be on my um, TikTok. Holy it's crap. Be, I need to it see was this. the this funniest is... moment I've ever, oh ever had my in my entire God. life. Um, and then oh. Reaps was like, Reaps, then, then I, then I, then I wrote, um, and then a little bit later, I dropped a hundred bits on you and, and with TTS and said, and I wrote, um, Boo! Dot 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 slash space slash space slash space, which gives a big pause in the TTS. B. So it said boo B. And Reeps was like, Whoa, are you scared B? And he's like, Fuck you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone in chat said, Everyone using did. Boob it. TTS. Yeah. Everyone You're welcome. Did I gave TTS you some re- I got you revenue, baby. You're welcome. I, you did. I <laughs> thank you. I'll give you a split later on. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> essentially, what I was saying was, is I'd held the microphone to the wrong part of my personality. And I, I readjusted it when I came back this year to be more about who I am and just to be my confident self. Um, and I, I think this comes across as what you're saying is like, I was nervous. I was anxious. People had said I was fake and I'd seen drops and I would had all these issues happen. And so I thought I had to find out who I was and go harder and be better and, and, and make up for it, especially because I have a lot of small streamers who look up to me, right? I only realized this like this week that I had that because I joined a streamer who had 20 viewers and I, I I turned my partner badge off so I could just chat normally. And he was like, I watch you. Mm. I fucking love you. And I was like, okay, well, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I appreciate that. I'm going to go to lurk. Yeah. Um, and, and anyway, so I, I felt like I had to go higher. Right. And so I came back in the new year and I had readjusted my levels and I was like, hello guys, how you doing? You know, I still myself and stuff like that. And a few people said, are you okay? What's going on? Are you wrong? What's wrong? And I realized it was people who hadn't been around prior to those six, seven months. Yeah. You know, they'd, they'd found me during the six, seven months of anxiety where I was holding the microphone to my butt and, and dealing with those things. And, and then when I, ke- when I re-leveled it, they weren't necessarily upset about it, but they were certainly surprised to see that re-level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that's probably what it would be. People just expect a certain thing, but they don't dislike it. They're just surprised by it. Um, and I think, I, I think I'm being more authentic now with my new levels where I'm back to, and I, I think I'm being more authentic now with my, with my jokes, um, and things like that. And I, and I have seen that weirdly, a lot of the OGs have come back. Oh, nice. I've had a lot more, pe- I've had a lot more people dropping by from the OG community from before the dip. Um, and, and that's been really exciting to see, but also I think it's because I've been getting more raids, which means I'm higher in the follower list. 
So like mm. on the left hand side, I've noticed that the higher up I am on my follower list, it's almost like a compounding effect. It's like if you can get to those top six on someone's follower list, then people will organically always be coming over back over to you like, oh, LJ exists again. I remember now I don't have a yeah. notifications on, but I'll go do it. Um, so I hope that I hope that is an interest. I hope that answers kind of the, what you were, mm. were going for, at least in my terms, is like readjusting yourself. I don't think people are like, oh, how dare you not do this thing? And if they are, they're probably not the kind of community member you want. Mm. But I think I readjusted to find my most authentic self again, which I had lost. I wasn't fake, but I had lost it. And that was a surprise for certain people who hadn't been around a long time and didn't know who I was. Yeah. Um, that's just my thoughts. on the No, idea. I, I yeah. think it is nice when you go back into a groove. Um, you know, when you do find there, there are those streams that you're like, yeah, everything's popping off. And this like, it's really, there's a nice flow. It's natural. It's organic. I remember I used to do this back in the day. How did I forget doing this? It's so easy now. But then mm. you do forget it next time um, or something you know what changes. Helps me? I yeah. go watch my old clips. Yeah. I go most viewed clips and I watch through like 15, 20 of my most viewed clips. And I go, yeah, you were way less confident then. Yeah in like you're as a presenter, but as a comedian, you were way more confident in your jokes. And I think it was because I knew my 20 to 50 demographic so well. Yeah. Like I knew my 20 yeah. to 50 average viewers. I knew exactly why they were watching me. I knew the jokes that worked. I knew how to get those Keck Ws, farm those lulls. And as I got bigger, I had to kind of readjust and find myself again and figure out what appeals to them. And, and I think I'm getting back into it. Nice. Um, which is good. Sorry to cut you off, Nick. Yeah. No, no, I would just say, um, yeah, no, it's good to sort of hear, hey, and I hear about that journey. And I think, yeah, a lot of people probably will end up going through the same thing where they'll hit some sort of, something will happen, they'll hit some sort of point, and then they'll try to either hit the, break through the ceiling that they're at, um, or try to circumvent, you know, a dip and they'll try to figure out what changed, what did I do differently? You know, mm. or maybe it wasn't something they did differently. Maybe there was something, there's something external that, you know, you couldn't control, like, for example, uh, I've been seeing, you know, a lot of talk recently about, um, you know, because because COVID is, you know, it kind of, uh, well, not COVID, the world is slowly opening up again. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's getting vaccines. They're going back to work, doing this and that. And so, you know, instant they're, the, time, the amount of time that they're online or watching Twitch might be spent some, doing something different or yep. they're just mm. not on Twitch as well. So, like, there's all these, like, and the list could go on. There's all these external factors. And I think, so a, a lot of people might be experiencing some dips and thinking that it's on them when it might not be them at all. Yes. So therefore, some people might be changing for no reason. And therefore, yeah. it's kind of this this cycle where they've changed for no reason. And now, now, that, now they're taking even more of a hit because they've tried to change or emphasize the wrong things because yes. they thought that they were doing something wrong. Definitely. That's, that's, that's such a good point. Can I read? Uh, I have two things I want to say on that real quick. First, I want to say with the intro thing, I was watching a Point Crow video the other day and I told Reeves about this yep. the other day, but I was watching a Point Crow intro and he started it and he was really high energy. He was like, hello everybody, welcome back. And then he stopped himself and goes, you know what? No, no, it's if it's 10 p.m. at night, you're trying to watch a video, That's you don't want that, do you? That's that's terrible, no one wants this. And he goes, hello everybody, welcome back in. And he's like, nah, not better. He, goes, and he, keeps, he workshopped his intro four times and kept them all in. And that watching that was like, watching that helped me more than like any advice video I've ever watched at my size. You know what I mean? Like I, I've watched so many different advice videos from, you know, Ludwig and Devin Nash and Harris Heller and all those things like that. And, and you know what? I reckon that if you have the ability to watch a content creator and kind of take on board what they say, who isn't doing advice, you'll probably learn a lot more. Like I honestly believe that you guys can learn a lot from, from our videos and our podcasts and stuff like that. But I think if you had the ability to critically look at a creator and break down what works and doesn't work, you'll learn so much faster. Because that's how I've learned. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I think you two have learned a yep. lot of it as well, Definitely. just by being in yep. the space. But not everyone has that skill, which is why they need channels like myself and Harris Heller and stuff to break that down. Yep. But that, that point crow thing was super interesting to me because I was like, you know what? Who does those really high energy videos? You know, they're the Tommy Innits and the Minecrafters and stuff like that. And and I don't, that's not my audience. No. So why should I try and pump that intro up? And, and it really reinstated the fact of I felt comfortable going back to my roots. And the second thing I wanted to read out, if there's if there's anything else, was a Twitter thread by a, a small streamer. I won't say who they are in case in case people are idiots or dickheads. Yep. Um, but they said, it's a tough time financially to be a full-time content creator. And I'm here in the spirit of transparency to tell you all a few reasons why, dot, dot, dot. So it's a thread, so there's a couple of tweets. Only okay. three or four, so I, I won't go too hard. Oh, okay. um, cost of living for people is at an all-time high right now. 
but streamer income is also at an all-time low right now. Mm -hmm. People are going back to work, so they're not watching streams as much, and higher cost of living means that a lot of people aren't able to donate or subscribe as much as they once were, especially during the pandemic when they weren't like eating out and doing travel and stuff like that. In July 2021, Twitch also began rolling out local sub prices. It's great for viewers, especially those residing outside the US, but for streamers, this cut this cuts out already low sub payouts even lower. More info on this dramatically. So there's a whole, then there's another Twitter thread about the local sub prices, which personally, as someone whose income doesn't come directly from Twitch necessarily, I didn't, it didn't bother me whatsoever, but I know a lot of content creators have actually really struggled because of the sub prices. Yeah. Um, but also sub counts have gone up dramatically, which means it's easier to unlock more emotes as a partner and stuff like that. But it's also, you know, you will earn less technically. Mm -hmm. Um, um, there have been naysayers and there always will be naysayers who tell people who tell content creators just don't stream full time forehead. Um, but content creation is an important part of the entertainment industry and deserves respect just like any other line of work. And they wrap it up by being like, look, I'm not trying to beg for subs. That's not what I'm asking for. I'm just trying to say that if you see streamers running more ads or use sponsors, don't get upset at them. Let them do their thing. Right. Which I think, you know, I think it's a fair thread. I think it's an interesting mm -hmm. thread to look at and say, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, that's that, that is a case right now. The world is opening up, as Nick said, yeah. and and people are going back to work and they have less income to spread on Twitch, let alone less time as well to spread on Twitch. And everyone is seeing this dip. I, I was listening to Trey the other day and I've always said on this podcast that Trey or architect with a three to the E, I've always said that he has such a positive stream. I always feel like he's going like he's he's on top of his game. But he had a moment during like a big 24 hour stream where he was playing Elden Ring, where he was like, man, I'm just, if it keeps going the way it's going, I won't be able to do this full time. You know, last year we had significantly more viewers than we have now. And I'm really struggling. Yeah. And I just dropped in his chat. Every single person I've spoken to is going through that right now. Yeah. The only people who aren't are the people who are in their uptick right now. Like, so like every streamer goes through a big uptick. And I've, I've said like the only people who aren't dropping back or seeing revenue drops or average viewer drops right now are those few people who have like, oh, I've just gone viral on YouTube. Boom. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, and he was like, wait, so everyone? I said, dude, literally everyone is in the exact same boat. The best thing you can do is just make more friends, on, more streamer friends. Yeah. Like, and then, you know, and he was like, oh, okay. So at least it's not every, at least it's not just me. But like, it's so tough because when I started seeing a dip, you're right. I changed a bunch of stuff and it hurt me more and compounded the dip. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when I, when, when other creators start seeing the dip, they do the same thing. They change a bunch of stuff because they think they're wrong and that compounds it and they lose the people who love them. When we've talked about this before, when, when you do see the dip, you don't change everything and panic and change the steering wheel and what, you know, whip your car off the road. No, you look at your top clips, you look at your channel, you look at how you got your growth, what attracted people, what was your genuine expression of who your content was for and who you appealed to. Figure that out and then re-find yourself and do that. Because if I've always said, if your content hasn't changed, right? And the only thing that's changed is you've lost viewers. Well, then it likely isn't your content's fault. It's a platform's fault. Mm -hmm. And there are things you can do, like make YouTube videos, TikToks, do all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you need to look at the people who are still watching you, figure out why that is and figure out what you have and keep going because otherwise you're going to turn off more people. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think it's I think, I think think it's what you said is right, Nick. It's People mm -hmm. are seeing dips right now and they're changing. Yeah. And yeah. that's fine that you want to be better, but be very careful about what you're changing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that's, I haven't changed yeah. my underwear in six months. <laughs> yeah. He keeps and sending us photos if we don't uh, know why. <laughs> <laughs> They're like a solid wooden crusty things now. It's very weird. It's like I, I knock on them when I'm worried about like bad things happening. It's Yeah, you knock on wood and that's you just go down there and... Uh, <laughs> the, the, just but like, the longer you wear them, just the, the you know it's, it creates that 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 certain feeling. It's a, it's it's a superstitious of thing. When you wear them, you know you're gonna yeah. have a good stream. And you know it's so that I don't. It's so that when I become a pro rugby player, my my uh, uh, twig and berries are intact. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> yeah. like wearing a full body cup. Um, yeah. <laughs> now I've got a visual in my head that I can't get yeah. out. <laughs> like, you, do you like, want it? Like, do you like, want to get it out? It's there forever, baby. It's like saying, oh yeah, I, I don't shower because I want the smell to make me more emotive because I'm yeah, repulsed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my dream ritual. I love it. I love it. I don't know. I think, I think, I think, right. So here's my thing. When you look at someone like Ludwig, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would assume that he's very fake. 
Or you look at Point Crow or Small Ant, and I think a lot of people would assume that they're fake, they're characters. Mm. I'm going to throw out there, I don't think they are. Yeah. From someone like myself, I think the reason why they're so successful is because they are smart entertainers, but also because they don't put it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if you put it on, then you sit around, a, you struggle, Yeah. right? Like, I think I put it on for a while and I struggled. Mm -hmm. And I think I see other creators start putting it on and they struggle. Yeah, definitely. And I think... And I think that you don't get to someone like Ludwig, small ant or anyone size like that unless there is some sort of genuine expression of who you are in there. That is that is the majority, um, which means you might ask, like, you know, Dr. Disrespect, how did he do it? Yeah. Well, I think there's a genuine expression of who he is there. Yeah, definitely. There's Without a shadow of a doubt. Underlying. There's um, I, I would um, if you go, I think I may still be on his channel. I'm not sure. But if you go onto YouTube and type Dr. Disrespect um, getting ready or something, there's an amazing mm -hmm. video of him before and after he puts on his, uh, uh, you know, a costume, you know, wig and everything like that. And he's talking mm -hmm. normally to the camera. He's like, this is just me when I was back playing in Halo days, talking trash online and people gave me the the kind of moniker of Dr. Disrespect. And I just, I bring that to the nth degree, you know, I just push it. Yeah. And you see him transforming into his character when he puts on the costume and stuff. And he knows it's a brand. Like he comes from a very smart thing of like, this is a brand. I'm going to do everything that I can to make as much money as I can through this character that I, that I, that I'll do. And I think that's a very good thing. And you bring up a really good point there in terms of uh, with Ludwig and Point Crow and, and Small and everything like that, they're charismatic people regardless, because they've got like this kind of, they got a, a niche value to them that you're like, I don't usually see this when it comes to YouTube videos, because a lot of the days when you're watching YouTube is I think a lot of kids watch YouTube and it's always like, Hey guys, what's going on? Face crazy. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just crazy cuts. And you smash know, the like button. Yeah. Subscribe. This is, this is all this big thing but with them when you get older and you like are looking for different creators they're the ones who are like this is it this is how i did it and here's the reasoning why you're watching it like they actually break it down for you as well because they're mm. like not making any smoke and mirrors about it but I, what i would also like to say to people who think that there are fake people online is there is a big difference from you without a camera on you if i'm talking to my mm. friends everything like that you you know you you're a certain way a certain type but I guarantee you, if you are around the same amount of friends, you're in the same way, and somebody then sets up a tripod and a camera and clicks that record button, I guarantee you, you will change. Not because you want mm. to, but what, like you're thinking, why am I being recorded? You think about what you're saying, what you're doing, how you're acting, what, what you look like. It's this weird kind of thing that as soon as there's a camera on you, people do change. And it's not because mm. they want you to change. You add 10 pounds. It adds, I got 50 yeah. cameras on me, yeah. you know. <laughs> I'm a oh, twig. God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but so yeah, it is going. that people change. Like it, it, it's a thing that if you're putting on a show, yeah, you can just be like, I'm just going to act natural. You will never act natural when there's a camera no. around you. It's impossible to do so unless you're on Big Brother. You film 24 seven and there's like a freaking, you know, hidden cameras all around you. I don't you. even think yeah. they are then. Yeah. I think they, I think when they're on Big Brother and stuff like that and they're on reality shows or when you're on camera all the time, mm -hmm. it's not that you become used to it, become more, uh, more whatever. Yeah. I think it's that you get taught that you're supposed to be like that all the time. Yeah. Like, because there's no way normal people act the way the people in Big Brother do. Yeah. Like, oh, no way. They want they those do. votes, you know? They want yeah. to be yeah. the, the storyline. Yeah. That's yeah. It. So, I, I don't know. I think, yeah, I don't know. Go, Nick. Yeah. Uh, um, the, I'm curious to see how much you guys might might relate to this as well. So, where, where for me, right? Like, re, re, I completely agree with Reeps. Like, when you're on the camera, like, you know, you, you, you change. Like, you kind mm. of, you kind of flick that, that switch in a way. And it makes a lot of sense because for me, so there are like, you know, the two aspects in my life where I have to, what like, you know, is like my, my, like is work or like I'm putting myself out there and that's like on stream, like or in, whenever I'm making any type of content or mm -hmm. like retail, but you know, I have to be a, a front, front facing person talking to customers. Friendly, and kind of thing, engaging. Know. Yep. That's it. Right. So those two things require, you know, a lot of energy. Um, so then, yeah, so, so my, my average kind of, you know, day to day is like, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm super chilled out running low. Cause I'm almost like I'm storing that energy for when I do go live. So it's like, mm. I go live and then I open the valve, all that energy comes out. I go to work, all that energy comes out. So it's like, and I think a lot of people probably would do the same. It's like when they're not making content, even if, you know, they're just sitting there working on stream stuff like editing or doing OBS upgrades or whatever. They're, they're chilled out. They're just kind of, they're not doing much. So 
they're able to save all of that hype and that energy for when it actually matters. Mm -hmm. And I think Mm. that's why people may get that feeling that someone might be fake because it's like, okay, well, sometimes you're like, no one can be a hundred percent every minute of the day. Mm -hmm. It's just not, you just can't do that. So yeah. When I think think, there's also different, you're, you're right. Right. But there's also different, you're not fake at, at work. You're just in a more professional sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, and you're not, you're not being fake when you go to dinner with your parents, right? You're just not going to swear or, or make jokes about, um, terrible things in front of your parents. I do. My mom and I are very, very, very (laughs) similar. I love that. I love Um, that. It's it's very similar. Um, (laughs) Um, but like, like, you know, but you're not, you, people who do that, they're not fake. It's not, it's not being disingenuous. Mm-hmm. It's just making sure that you, you know, you're just being the person or the version of yourself that I guess fits the moment. Yes. Right. Like you're in a different like when environment. There's constraints yeah. there that you have to well, adhere to. Yeah. You're dead on. Yeah. When I, when I'm, when I'm at a music festival, I'll fucking like, woo, yeah, let's go, you know, like have a beer and, mm-hmm. and jump around and stuff like that. But if I'm at a nightclub, I'm not dancing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's a different environment. It's a different mm. part. I love dancing, but I'm going to do it at a music festival more than I am at a nightclub yep. because it's, it's just a different place and a different mm-hmm. vibe. And and I, I don't think people would say at a nightclub, oh, LJ's not dancing. He's clearly faking it because I know he loves dancing. Yeah, It's like, but at the same time at a music festival, they're not going to look at me and go, LJ's dancing? Wow, he's so fake. You know, yeah. it's, like, it's like, it's like, no, he's just getting into it. Like, right. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that's, you're hundred percent right, Nick. You're not hundred percent all the time. So you're building your energy up for stream, but also you just, you know, you don't have to be, those things you know what i mean like you're still being yourself and i think that i think that the people who watch i'm gonna throw that if you're a streamer if you are a small streamer if you're a content creator and you're the kind of person who's going to tell someone else who is also a content creator that they feel fake and that they're like that and blah 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 then you probably are projecting yeah is that a weird thing i feel like they're projecting then because you're either projecting your own insecurities that this person is is a different way to you are or you are clearly probably putting something on, right? Or having to feel like you have to act a certain way and then you're putting that on someone else. Yep. I, I yeah. agree with that. Or or it's the, the case of where they, they try to take from other successful people. And it's like, what are they, what's the, does they say imitation is the highest form of flatter, flattery? Flattery, is what yeah. they say. Mm-hmm. So as, long yeah, as, like, you, as long as you like make it your own. Yeah, I, I'd agree, yeah, 100%. Yeah, but I know it's, I'm saying like yeah. the people do that in the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Where yes. they yeah, try yeah, yeah, yeah. to become someone else, and they yes. try to 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 steal to steal ideas, and like not even try to you know make it their own, yeah. Not use it as a basis for a concept. Like they they will fully adapt what someone else has done because they're like, well, it's worked for this person, yeah. So I'm gonna do yeah. that, and I'm gonna be successful too. So it's like, no, it doesn't. It and doesn't they become work like the that. wish version of you know of what's that funny? personality. Yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. You know what's funny, right? I I think I'm guilty of this mm-hmm. to a degree. So I think I'm guilty of this to a degree because I think my YouTube channel, my very first video I uploaded was I just came up with a funny idea that I thought would be a fun stream where it was me playing as a hitman, Hitman Agent 47, and I was doing Hitman. But the rule was is that before I kill someone, I have to take a photo of them that's artistic and looks nice. Mm -hmm. If I can't take a photo, I'm not allowed to kill them. No matter who the target is, no matter who I'm fighting, it could be a staff member, a guard, could be anything. I need a beautiful photo of them or else I'm not allowed to kill them, right? And it turned into like a really funny 16 minute video that I edited myself and it got like 600 views, right? Which isn't much, but that's the most views that the new YouTube channel has gotten, mm-hmm. right? But then I but then I, I kept listening to this feedback that I got from all these other YouTubers about how you have to make certain types of content, do things a certain type of way. And so I shifted it. And I started doing, you know, uh, the, the tier lists or the buying streams, which th- that's me doing those things. I'm putting my own spin on it. I'm doing my thing. But those videos aggressively performed less than just me playing Devour with one of my mods and being myself or me playing Hitman and editing them down into nice videos. Yeah. The same with the, this game is designed to make you rage kit playing Alt F4. That's just me mm-hmm. playing a game and then having it edited down. And I think I've learned this from watching uh, Stans. Okay, so Stans is a great uh, up and coming Twitch streamer. I say up and coming because that's what he won his award in or whatever. Um, but he doesn't do all the wild challenges and stuff. He just comes up with a good content idea and then he does the stream and then he edits it down into a 10, 12 minute video with some really good packaging on it. And I think that's, I think that's like the thing I was trying to instill in people in last night's video in last, in last night's video is that you don't, you shouldn't copy someone else. 
you know, just look at these creators who are doing X thing and then cutting it into really well packaged, engaging videos, right? And I think personally, I fell for the trap and I did these buying streams and these tier list streams and stuff like that. When in reality, if I'd released maybe like five or six more videos similar to the Hitman one or the Devour one, I'd probably have way more traction mm -hmm. because that is an authentic expression of who I am rather than a bombastic explosion of here is this content. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, not that I Amazon streams of the tier list don't fit me. I've done those before they were videos. I did them, I did them in my first six months of streaming when I had 50 to 80 average viewers. Yeah. But I, but I think that as videos, they weren't me necessarily. Yeah. They were me and they were my own personality, but they weren't the content that excited me. They excited me as a stream, not as a video. Um, so I think you're right. And yeah. I think we fall into this trap because we get told we have to. Yep. And you're right. I think it, it is very interesting because it's driven by you, not by the content. And I think a lot of people want to be driven by the content. It's like this, you know, I let uh, chat have my credit card and we bought this, you know, the, those kind of things. But when it is just you, because people do join the streams because of the personality. Mm. Most of the time, you, you can say there's definitely people who join because of the gameplay and they want to watch, you know, people like pop off and, you know, frag out and things like that, definitely. But I think a majority, because there is a shift in Twitch where, yes, it is gaming, but it's so much more these days. And if you can relate to that personality on camera, then you are going to have a lot more traction. And the material that you release on your YouTubes, on your TikToks and everything like that, if it's driven by you more than the content, that's what they're there for because they see the content mm. anywhere else. People have done it 10,000 times better than you because they're amazing people in the world, right? Who are gods at gamers. Um, yeah. But for you, if it's the content and they want to see you fail, they want to see you succeed, they want to see you struggle, they want to see you happy, everything in between, if you can give them those emotions and give them that part of you, I think that that always drives it. And you're right because I, the same thing with my channel. When I do those crazy um, ideas, I like doing them. I like putting it out there, but they always underperform compared to when it's just me playing a video game. As soon as I put out me playing a video game, like a horror game, it, it's it's the best, you know, uh, kind of traction I get when it comes to my YouTube channel. When it's me doing like a quiz or doing like, you know, tier list, things like that, it underperforms, but I still like putting it out there regardless. Well, it's because it's, it's, it's still the content we like to do yes. as people. Yes. It's yeah. just, I think that it's not, it's not our it's not inspired by what we like to like, what, like, you know, it's hard to explain. People are going to hear this and not understand it. I think, but it's mm. like, there's a difference between the things that really fit and explode our personality and what we love to do, but have been told we aren't allowed to do because you can't grow like that. Yeah. And then there's a difference. And then the difference thing where it's like, this is how you need to create. This is what you need to do to grow. And it's so hard to balance those two things. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. the, you, you pretty much nailed it. It's like, yeah, like the stuff that w can perform better, which is a more a, a more valid expression of like kind of you, you and your content. It's just is not the most clickable thing. It's not the most exactly. Thing that can yes, go thank viral. you. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's the clickability. We can't. How do you package? How, how do you successfully package a fifteen minute video where it's entirely driven by you and you know for me? Like for example, uh, the 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 phasmophobia video I packaged terribly. Because how am I supposed to package a 14 minute video where it's me and Reaps who are not household names. We're yes. not a Ludwig and, and cutie Cinderella playing Phasmo. Exactly. You know, how do we package that? So it's actually clickable and engaging. And I think that's where the fear comes in. And I realize ambiguous amphibian is such a good example of why I've loved using him as an example lately is because three years it took him and 70 plus videos to find his to find how he packaged his content. Yeah. And it's very unique. It's, uh, everyone's like, oh, Ambiguous Amphibian just does challenge content like Smant and stuff for different games. I, I think Ambiguous Amphibian is an incredibly unique content creator who, who has ag aggressively found his niche and found his voice that appeals to him. And I, I think it takes a long time to find that. Yeah. And um, I'm excited about the fact that I've learned this earlier, that I've learned what kind of is my thing. Now I just need to find time between stream scheme and every other project I've got going on to focus on it. Yeah. But it's, it's an interesting one because I don't feel fake by doing the Amazon buy stream, but do I think it best represents me? Probably not. You know, mm -hmm. I think the person who's in those videos is me. It's not a fake version of me, but it's kind of like what we talked about with the raid trailers. Yeah. Are the raid trailers a true expression of what your stream actually is? Yeah. You know, um, which by the way, the raid trailers, 
there was a lot of conversation about the raid trailers, both in Discord. Um, I even got some comment comments on the Stream Scheme uh, channel about the raid trailer conversation. Wow. And we had we had the comments on this thing as well. Pretty much the consensus is if it's short, snappy, mm -hmm. and is is unique like like Nick's, then cool. If it is just the same generic style as everyone else, or it's too long, it is you're just oh god. Yeah. You know that's like that is pretty much it. There was no one yeah. in between being like I don't really mind them. It was either. Yeah. I like it or I hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it, yeah. As I, yeah, that which is good. It's good. It's good. Thank, thank you guys for everybody who commented and or get, you know kind of shed some shed their own sort of thoughts on it. Thank you because it, yeah. it helps us and helps other people as well who are trying to figure out what they want to do and how they want to thank or respond to raids. Um, because yeah, like like for me, I feel like a a raid, a raid is has was always something massive. And it's like. Let's let's kind of celebrate that a little bit, mm. and then and then get back into the content as definitely. well. Definitely, so. definitely. I, th I think I think I think we, same as we said last week is your raid videos. Uh, it, it's it's what it's like. It's done well. Yes, right. It's like it, and like all things on streaming, and this is I, I say this on our Twitch all the time. Sometimes if I'm feeling truly masochistic, I'll go on our Twitch and read through <laughs> some of the things. Oh, God. Um, and I say this to them all the time. There'll be like a post that's like. Should you do X or should you do Y? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah. And, there's, and then usually 99% of the comments are just people just being completely wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'll just write in, I'll just write back being like, as literally everything in streaming, there are times to do one thing and times to do another thing. And it requires context and understanding of your audience and understanding of your content. You can't say that this is the right or the no or the yes. And, and that's one of the hardest things about being an educator is if I say, do this, then people are going to turn around and go, I, I've seen success from doing the opposite. And I go, yeah, that's great. You should. I, I'm just saying that this is what worked for me. And this, these people, here's the example. I'm mm -hmm. glad you saw success as well. Yeah. Um, and it, raid videos is the exact same. There is context that requires it to see what works and what doesn't. They wouldn't work on my channel. I don't I don't think they'd work on Reaps' channel. No. Um, but I think that they work on other channels if done well. You yeah. know what I mean? They'll never work if they're like two minutes long and they're terribly edited and they're the same thing for months and months on end. Um, you'll drive people mad. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's so important to have variety. That's why, like, I uh, wanted to make sure I like wanted to make sure I had something different. It wasn't always the same video. Like, even when back back when I only had like two options, it's like at least I had I had the two options to switch between. Yes. Yeah. Um, but now and then I've got a few, a few more, so it's like it's it's always it's it's given that given that variety. No one's gonna gonna sit there going ah here we go again because like honestly a lot of the time it's like it, everyone in the community even. Uh, even sem semi regulars as well have their favorites. They have their favorite raid responses that they like to mm, see mm -hmm. and that they always enjoy seeing. And because it's only seen when a raid comes in, it feels fresh and it feels exciting. Yes, so. that is good. No, I love it. Yeah. yeah, I think it requires a lot of context. Um, and and I, yeah, I don't know. I think it's interesting. I think the raid videos, uh, highlights, and channel trailers and stuff like that is a really good example of. Some people would say it's fake um because it's just your best bits but is that fake or is that just like you know what i mean like yeah. i think i think that's really like people will be like well obviously a, a, a channel trailer is not fake and it's like well okay it is you taking all of your best moments and putting it into 30 seconds in order to make someone believe that this is the best content of their life yeah. right and they should stick around and watch this whole thing and it's like if you're going to say that someone being a, a energetic on stream or positive or trying to be engaging as possible is fake well, then you need to also call the channel trailer fake mm -hmm. because it's the exact same concept. It's you're putting a show on and you're just trying to amplify your own authentic expression by being entertaining. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where people really don't understand. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where I, I guess when you say the word fake, um, there's mm. a negative connotation to it. You know what I mean? Mm. Like um, this person's fake, what they're doing is fake and everything like that. But again, we are mm. in a business or one would say a community of creator where basically you're trying to stand out and you're trying to do things that you wouldn't do in real life. You know, like could you imagine in real life if you're sitting down playing a video game and instead of people watching on the internet, they're all behind you watching. Like there's a hundred or so people watching <laughs> over your shoulder like this. It's like, is he, is he real? Is he organic? It's obviously, it's a show. It's, it's you're putting it onto a camera and people are yeah. watching. They're going to take it. However, and again, what we haven't really talked about is that everyone has a different definition of what they like and what they don't like. So exactly, exactly. Yes. There's an emotional intelligence and maturity to go. I don't like this. Like for me, I can't stand the Minecraft, uh, uh, I was going to say streamers, but it's not for me. It's not my mm. demographic. It's just, to me, 
it's just too much going on and too much screaming and, and things like that. Mm. It's just, it's not entertaining for me. But again, also if really I try really to go, love Bommy. I'm sorry. Okay, listen, gonna, was, can we keep it I'm down? I'm just going to throw it out LJ, there. this is oh, up. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> can we talk about this after? Okay. Sorry, but okay. this, this other thing where it's like, if I try and bring those Minecraft uh, fans of, you know, Tommy and things like that and take them yeah. over to say, I don't know, like Iona's stream, for instance, they'd be like, oh, this, oh, it's too slow paced. You know what I mean? It's like, there's, where's the crazy, where's, where's the yelling? Where's, where's all this, that and difference? Like, that is actually Iona's stream though. It's pretty accurate. Maybe a different example. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is she yelling all the time? I, when she I'm does, close, she's she quite does, chill. She does. She does cursed cosplay, so she does not fit the Animal Crossing New Horizon niche. She will be playing Animal Crossing while dressed up and like a full body paint, like just terrible like cosplay of a frog that looks like it's something's crawled out of hell. Oh, yeah. like well, it is. Well, well, and well, the entire time chill, she'll be screaming. <laughs> maybe I've got yeah. the wrong one. No, it's the, the Kirby one in, in particular. She, oh, she, that is cursed. Reap, she uh, she wore like a green a green screen like a green suit, so she yeah. could chroma key her, her body out. Yeah, and she painted her face pink. And then she did two red circles for Kirby's feet. She's like, I'm Kirby. Here's his feet. And it was just her face. <laughs> yeah. She is a very energetic, cursed, wild streamer. It does not, it does not suit what you imagine Animal Crossing is, which is another big reason why I always say you don't niche into a game, you niche into a key demographic. Yes. Because that's a very good point. You, yeah. Um, but yes, you, what you're saying is right, right? It's like everyone likes different things. Yeah. If you're bringing an audience there, there no one's going to like everything, you know, you're not going to have 100%, 100% success rate. And I think a lot of people, when they don't have that 100% success rate, when you are starting off, when you're a small time streamer, you take it a lot more to heart. And especially if you get called out and going, you're fake, this isn't genuine or whatever it is, because I'm sure we've all had moments of that on stream. Um, and it's just like, you just got to cast it to the side, because if you know that you're being genuine, if you know you're being yourself, like really don't worry about it, you know? But if there is that little bit of doubt that niggles away in your brain and you're kind of like, am I being fake? And, and then you look back on the clips and you see that there is a certain shift. It may be a better shift, don't get us wrong. Like, but definitely try and figure out what your niche is, as we talked about many, many times. Because as, as you can tell, there's gonna be those things where it's, yeah, you're gonna be fake, you know? Dr. Disrespect is fake, but he's goddamn successful mm. and he loves doing it. So is that a bad thing? What, what, is, what do you want to achieve for people watching? Do you want them to be like, I want them to know the real me, or do I want them to be entertained and you know have that kind of uh, fourth wall up in terms of my privacy or, or things like that? Really yeah. write down what you want to achieve because again, it may feel like we're doing this blanket statement of fake is bad. You should just be yourself on camera and you know things will happen for you. No, just figure out what's good for you and how you're going to achieve that is, is what I want yeah. to say. Yeah. Dude, you reminded me of a comic that my wife, when we met, she when we were in uni, she used to have a comic up on her wall. Uh, and it was, it's a comic, I believe it's called Obelisk and Metronome. Okay. I think it's called, I don't know. It's like you can find it on the internet. And uh, it's it's a it's a metronome and it just has the conversation with an obelisk and they look really similar and it's a weird little play, um, black and white, very artistic, very uni student. Okay. And it, the obelisk just says to the metronome, um, the metronome's like, oh, I'm not having fun. And the obelisk says, oh, just be yourself. Um, and the, uh, the metronome goes, um, I am forever an ever-changing thought and emotions and package and blah, 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 that swings back and forth. I have no, I, I have no sense of self. And the obelisk goes, just have fun then. <laughs> 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 and it's like, it's like, it's like, that's, you know, that's, that, that, that's a weirdly poignant way of doing it is like, as, as content creators, we're living our lives essentially in front of the camera, mm -hmm. right? We're yeah. growing like every year. I, I feel every like, week. yeah, yeah. As humans, we change mm -hmm. so rapidly, so much. you know? When, when you're 21 years old, you hate being told you'll understand when you're older. Yeah. But the reality is when I was 21 years old, I knew fucking nothing compared mm -hmm. to what I do when I, what I did at 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 and now. And like, and that, that's a, that's so true thing. And then and when you're a content creator, you can go back two years and see how much you've changed. And people can say, well, you're fake now. I miss the old LJ. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is this is LJ. I just grew up because I've been doing this for two years. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? You of course I'm going to change. Evolve. Yeah. yeah. I evolved. I got to level 36 and now I'm a Charizard. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. And the most niche, uh, not the, sorry, the most uh, beloved, but also boring Pokemon starter. <laughs> <laughs> Write in the comments below if you believe that. <laughs> Flame Wars in the chat. Um, yeah. Everyone something... always says that. If you pick Charmander, then you're a basic bitch. That's what they say. Wow. Yeah. I don't hot, know this Pokemon uh, community. I didn't Man. say it. I'm just saying what everyone else says. Okay. No, all right, that's all right. a bait. Oh, don't, don't, you can't, you, you just bait it out. It's like, oh, no, I didn't say it. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Bulbasaur boy. All right. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a green frog You're boy. A sprite frog. 
sprite for a flog. <laughs> there's a, there's something that you said before, LJ, where you mm. so you compared like um doing sort of the Amazon buy stream compared to something that you know you you come up with like you know, an idea mm. for a game or like that. And um, it I, I I totally get what you're saying because like the Amazon buy stream, while a you know a core concept anybody who does that sort of idea will have their own spin on it. They'll have their own personality injected into it. Their communities mm. will be different. The products will be different. So it's like mm. the premise is the same, but the but the video itself is going to be completely different. Yeah. And then when you compare it to something you come up with, like the taking the taking photos of your targets in Hitman, like an amazing idea. However, if someone was going to take, if someone tried to take that concept, like if someone tried to do that, that would just be plain copying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, the Amazon buy stream one, that's, it's not, it's not copying. It's just like, it's an idea. It's like a, like a, a, mm. a I'm, I'm not sure where I was going with this thought, but I was just trying to make the comparison. Like it's easy to take that Amazon buy stream idea and twist it, but, yeah. th and then it's, but it's not fully, it's not fully an expression of yourself yeah. compared to something you come up with from the beginning that is fully enveloped your, of your you. Your idea. Yeah. I, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, because no, I, yeah, I agree, and it's it's one of the reasons why I stopped watching Call Me Kevin for a while. There, I got really into watching Call Me Kevin. I'd watch him; he'd upload daily, so I'd watch like every video he uploaded. And then he uploaded the video called um, Project Zomboid: uh, Can I Survive the Worst Start in Project Zomboid? And I was like, "That's an ambiguous amphibian video. That's all it was. Like, that is an ambiguous amphibian video." And he didn't shout out ambiguous amphibian for coming up with the idea, but I know he'd watched ambiguous amphibian because he'd said a few videos ago or a few weeks ago that he had just discovered ambiguous amphibian and liked his content. And that really frustrated me because I was like, you can do the same idea and say, can I survive the worst start? Because there's a procedurally generated game, right? And that's fine. The content will be different, but the core concept isn't. And I feel like you should be shouting that person out, especially when you're a large creator. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. One of those is an idea that one person came up with and it really shows off their personality. And the other one is a large creator who was inspired by to use that piece of content and that concept. And that didn't hit the same. And I'll be honest, watching watching uh, Call Me Kevin's version of it was really lackluster comparatively to Ambiguous Amphibians. Okay. Because AA did content, like it's his content. He loves that game. He loves survival games. He loves pushing himself to the extreme. He loves spending hours and hours and hours carefully doing things in this game to do it right and then finding funny ways to, to share it with his audience. Call Me Kevin is a comedy creator. He just does the funny thing because he's bad at the games. You know, he follows the same concept that I do that I'm mediocre at best, mm -hmm. right? And that's a similar thing that he has. And when you see him pick up Ambiguous Amphibian's idea, but then put it in his way, it is so much less satisfying. Yeah. Because it's just someone flailing at a really hard game and a really hard concept rather than the core idea of, hey, I have played 580 hours of this game. I'm going to give myself the hardest possible start and I'm going to let you guys see the shenanigans we get up to. Versus, I've played five hours and this is the best title that I saw. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely That's agree. It. Yeah, let's see. Um, I, I I'm kind of I'm curious to see. I, I'm sure this is gonna be a YouTube video, but I don't. Did you guys see? It was I think it was literally yesterday. Point Crow did a twelve. Uh, I think it was a, 12, a ten hour stream watching Ice Melt. Yep. What? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Leg and he did. He he didn't even get to the full. It was like a giant block of ice as well. <laughs> yeah. Like, like in the nine and a half hour mark, there was still like this much left, and he just literally sat there watching it. And I was talking to his chat and like he in chat would use TTS and he'd look over and they'd ask him questions. It was just like a, a just as such a like it was, you know, the idea of it, it's like watching Ice Melt, not an exciting thing. But he was just like, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to see where it takes it. But you think about it and I was like, that's a point crow thing to do. Yeah. Like mm. to, <laughs> it's a very point crow thing to do. But if someone else did it, you'd be like, why? It's a bit weird. Why yeah. are you doing that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like Mr. Beast, you know, saying, what was it, PewDiePie's name 100,000 times or something. Like it's an endurance thing that only he could do, like that, you know, is so him in terms of it. And yeah. then you've got all these people trying to do the, say the name 100,000 times and stuff. But um, yeah, I, 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 I diverge from what we we're talking about there. No, no, I think yeah. you're right, right? Like mm. these are the things. And I think Mr. Beast is who popularized that concept of I'm going to say this thing X number of times and that's, that, that is now a trend, yeah. right? Like, and I think that it's, it's very easy to see 
when a trend is a trend that's inspiring and when someone is simply mimicking, right? Yes. Like it, like a tr another trend is thumbnails. Mm -hmm. You'll go through times where everyone is, all the big guys are using the same thumbnail. It's a screenshot of Discord with two people. One says X statement, the other says Y statement, mm -hmm. right? That is a huge trend right now. Yeah. It's not copying, it's inspiration, yeah. right? The, the the I don't know if I mentioned this, but the title for last night's video, Three Big Mistakes Small Streamers Still Make, I was watching a vidIQ video and on the side, another vidIQ video was recommended called Three Big Mistakes New YouTubers Still Make. Uh -huh. And I was like, that's a great concept for a video. I'm going to write that for streamers. And so I just, I just took the title concept and said, okay, this isn't for YouTubers. This is for streamers now. What are my three big mistakes that I think people are still making? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not, the content is completely different. Right. It's just the title inspired me to do it a certain way because I I was like, that's really that's that's engaged me, which means it'll engage others. Yes. You know? And I think that's what I was saying earlier about if you have the ability as a as a as a creator, as a marketer, to look at what is out there and understand why it works, you'll learn so much more by creating and learning from it and, and seeing what people do and testing things out than you will from watching a thousand videos. You need that practicality yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, and, but again, I know a lot of people don't have the experience to critically analyze and figure out what's working. Um, and that's why videos need to exist to help do that. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I don't know, you're, you're right. It's, it, there are these trends that pop up and now these days fucking TikToks, they're going, oh. I'm going to, I'm do. I'm saying this thing a hundred thousand times, but they start the, they start the stream at 990,000 and they're like, yeah. <laughs> it's like so like if we're talking about fake if you don't know this trend at the moment basically people go live on uh tiktok and they say things a hundred thousand times but of course they instead of saying a hundred thousand times they start at ninety nine thousand and eight hundred or something like that and then people can only the ending is most exciting exactly and then people can give them money to go oh you've got to say it 10 more times you know what i mean like so it re revokes oh, the 10 my. times they yeah. said it so it's this stupid thing and then there is literally like lj is not exaggerating when he did that piece of the of them trying to say the word like that it's literally them like doing the worst acting ever like i've done this for 30 hours and you, i'm so close to the end and i can barely speak anymore it's so, been live for 15 minutes it's so <laughs> yeah. trash it's it, it, it angers me but i i would it's like tiktok's for kids yeah it, it is it is exactly that it's also like that facebook thing where they make 10 minute I can't videos even count that high yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Why would you? Why would you? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a Facebook trend at the moment where they make 10 minute videos because that's when it um, clicks over into, you know, yeah, ad revenue yeah. and all that kind of crap yeah. where they do the first 30 seconds and then it's nine minutes and 30 seconds of nothing and then the worst payoff at the end just so that people watch all the way through. But what I was going to yeah. say is I'd be really interested to know in the comments if you think you are being fake on camera, if you think that being fake is a bad thing when you go into a stream and what exactly you would say say fake is because i know that we have our thoughts and what we think fake is in general but what do you think is fake and what turns you off about a streamer being fake please let us know because i'm very interested to see but i was wondering should we head over to the q and a's now because i know that people are yes. dying to yes. get the answers our most popular segment i would say people are loving these q and a's absolutely yeah 100 percent. and and last week uh jess got an entire episode devoted to being positive yep um, and this week, uh, we've got Nutty Chili, who got an entire episode devoted to being authentic nice. uh, versus being as Great name as um, well. Mm -hmm. Nutty Chili. What a yeah, I think <laughs> no, it's good too. I, I like it. Yeah. Um, I'm starving. Yeah. I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm getting ramen for lunch, I reckon. Oh, oh what? Um, yeah, big, I'm going to get a big bowl of like udon ramen. What are you going to have? Oh, What's your, what are you going to have it with? So like tofu, chicken, beef? What are you gonna um, have? Fried tofu square. Yep. Uh, chi spicy chili broth. Yeah. Um, udon noodles in it. Um, shredded spicy pork. And then on the side, I'm going to get two chicken katsu bowls. That's my, that's my, that's what my day is going to be. So uh, uh, Tim, now I'm that. hungry. All the people oh, listening dude, to the podcast would be like, I know what I'm having for lunch, dinner yeah. today. I've been hungry. Tell us, comment us, what are you going to have for lunch, dinner? Yeah. Let us yeah. know. <laughs> let us yeah, know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, let choice. us know. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, that, that's the, that's the, uh, that's the question to come into streams with. It's just like something relating to like dinner <laughs> yeah. or something. Did you have that? Oh, no, no. I've yeah. got a great code word for that. Actually. Now that you said, I'll save it for the end. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It is your week. It is your week. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I will say, by the way, to answer the question, since since you asked it to the commenters, mm -hmm. and I want us to answer it as well. Okay. The only part of being fake that bothers me is when you fake understanding my message. If I write a message in your chat and you don't understand it, but you fake it, I will leave. 
I, that's, I, I, it frustrates wow. me to no end. It's like, I don't mind if you don't understand my message and go, what are you talking about? Yeah. What is that? I don't care. Yeah. But if you read my message and go, ha ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. don't yeah. understand it. I, it does frustrate me a lot. Cause I'm like, okay, well, yeah, this isn't, this isn't going to be the exchange that I expected from us. Mm -hmm. You do your thing. I'm going to go scoot and do my thing. Okay. Um, do you guys have an issue like that? I do. Well, as I said, I used to be that person who would like, I, yeah, that's funny. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. But now I call people out um, in terms of, I call myself out at times, like, I don't know what the freak you're talking about. And then they're no, like, I mean, like as this. a viewer. Oh, as, as, a, like, viewer. as, a, as a viewer, do you have, do you ever have like a turn off that you're like, you know, this doesn't seem real or this doesn't seem like that, or this is like weird or. I have had misconstrued moments where I thought I was relating to something and they took it like a different way. And I like mm -hmm. that because they were like, okay, that's a genuine thing. They thought I was speaking of this and that, but I've never had a moment where I've typed something in and they pretended to know what I was talking about because I, I, I don't know, but yeah. How about yourself, Nick? Uh, I've had a it's been it's not hasn't have rarely has happened uh -huh. um i'm trying to think is this a me moments, thing does but... that mean i'm just an idiot and i'm typing in chats and people are like what the guy what the fuck is this guy talking about it happens to me all <laughs> yeah, the time really it happens to me so often and i'm like what, what, it's not that hard give like, us an I'm example like, oh. what are you saying <laughs> yeah what, what's, I'm like, what's the go i'm like i'm like um hey um streamer you got a dummy thick ass and i want to slap it like it's a cherry you know and they're like uh ha, ha, yeah and i'm like clearly it's not that hard to understand no i'm joking it's entirely a joke. I, I don't have a key example right, right. it's like I'll, I'll just say like i'll i'll be like i'll say something or, or laugh along with a joke or, or reference something they've done and they'll 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 read it out and be like oh yeah of course and it's fine i get it it's hectic we have to multitask mm -hmm. but i just wish people would be like lj shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and I worry it's that they're too, I worry that people are too scared to treat me like I deserve to be treated. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When I'm in Reeps' chat, if I talk smack, Reeps will tell me to shut the fuck up. Yeah, you know I what banned. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah he'll, he'll, he'll be like, you're banned. Yeah, get the fuck you're banned. You just want to be treated yeah. like everyone else. You just yeah. like treat like- yeah. You want to be yeah. a common man on the street. Just how much I is a carton common... of milk, you know? Yeah. Dude, what okay, my wife, my wife says us. that I've lost touch with the common man. <laughs> Really? So, so, so I, we're not, we're not, we're not aggressively wealthy or anything like yeah. that. But as I've said many times before I was a content creator, we were pretty broke 99% of the time, right? I grew up broke. We were break, trying to break out of that lower class, blah, 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 all that jazz. But now I'm a content creator and I've set up all this stuff properly. We, we have a quite a healthy income and we're, we're happy and comfortable, right? Yeah. But my wife and I would be like, you've lost touch with the common man. <laughs> you've lost touch with the common man. I'm like, what do you mean? I, I am the most common man ever. And she goes, when you go to the pub with mates, what 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 do you buy? What do you drink? Yeah. And I said, I'll either have a lemon, lime and bitter spritzer <laughs> or, or I will get myself a lovely uh, craft beer. And she goes, anyone buying craft beers has lost touch with the common man. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Like, what? Claire, no, Claire what? is amazing. She is yeah, I love fantastic. Claire. I, I was going <laughs> to say, like, like, LJ, do you mind Northern next Chris. week if I give mm. you a quiz? It's going to be yeah. a common man quiz um, that I think it's I will ace it. something in England that they do. Apparently it's called like white, white van man or something like that. It's um, basically will, they ask them common questions. So like how much is a carton of milk? Things like that. And then you've got to give us your best kind of- $25 yeah, yeah. shortly. Like what? Like I, just give, <laughs> yeah. I just give the money to the butler and they come back. Okay. I'm like, Everybody, I'm, wait are we till talking, next week. We're talking soy, good. we're talking lactose free. <laughs> yeah. like. Oh no, that's how I know I'm a common man. Give me normal milk that just tastes like real milk. It's only 2% fat, all right? That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> That's how I know I'm not fake. Okay. Cuz I've I've I'm with the common man, Just right? Just you drink <laughs> normal milk. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'll have the normal me, milk, the cow yeah, give one. Give me the instant coffee. Instant coffee any day of the yeah, week. Instant coffee um, for days. Yeah. At least I don't pull a reaps and microwave my milk. Okay. Um, you know, we'll, do, we'll talk about this next week. Um, this okay, okay, yeah, I'm okay. Right. Unbelievable. That's not a joke either. We're about to open a can of worms. We're, we're, <laughs> I'm about to pop off, boys. I'm about to <laughs> microwave this milk. All right, let's go. What's our first question? All right, all right. So Jess, who inspired our entire last week's episode, uh, hit us with the, uh, oh my God, I got to inspire a whole episode now. And yes, Jess, thank you so much. Uh, last week's episode did really well as well. People loved it. So yep. maybe positivity is the right step. Who mm. knows? No way. Um, nah, come nah, on. We nah, live in a lots, lots of people said they loved, lots of people lo said they loved listening to the old grumpy man. <laughs> 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 well, you got it this week. There you go. Um, so Jess says, 
I know you guys have mentioned a couple of times about previous work experience, such as editing um, and how some random experiences can sometimes fuel your stream discussions jokes. But I'm curious what other pieces of advice from your experiences you bring to your streams. Obviously, you can all see how videography and editing skills are transferable. But what other skills are bringing to the table that you never would have guessed as transferable skills? Customer service, social studies, accounting. Uh, boys, you can answer it. What, what do you think? Ooh, that okay. is... Um... I mean, it's. I guess it's kind. It's kind of a sidestep to editing, and I never intended it to, you know, uh, be end up be using it. I was kind of like in the back of my mind, like, oh, yeah, it's kind of this can kind of help with the content creation. But um, I, you know, I did two years of uh, of VFX. I went and did a diploma mm. and then advanced diploma, um, and that's not a common thing. Like, you know, it's not a common thing to go and to go and do. Um, but that has definitely helped me a fair amount in in content creation like and and from a whole lot of aspects um mm. i i think we've and like we spoke about in the past is like there's a you you take a lot of pride being able to make this make things yourself you won't be able to do everything but if you the more that you mm. can make yourself the better the more control you have you you can fine tune everything yes. um but i i could yeah i definitely say that i mean i've been i've been working like a customer service like front facing job since i was uh, old enough to work so like since I was like 14 15 yeah. years old so I've mm. always been very uh I guess it's 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 never been too a too far off thought or feeling to be talking and uh and kind of knowing that you're in you're in you're in a front-facing environment whether it's a camera or a random person coming into the store yeah so you, the customer service suggestion yeah absolutely like that definitely more than I really I think I realize has kind of helped me kind of become that that on-camera presence like yeah i was definitely shyer you know when i first started absolutely mm. i think everybody is to an yeah. extent um but in terms of every anything else i think like it, it depends like in terms of the from the functionality standpoint or just kind of your own personality like uh reaps has brought up the you know the example about the the acting thing where they said mm -hmm, to him mm. you know go go live your life and yeah. get life experiences and come back and Pulling from, and LJ spoke about that as well, pulling from those life experiences really just kind of helps you find yourself. Like you need to kind of explore the, the world and yourself and, you know, friends, family, relationships to figure out who you are. Like yeah. figure mm. out who you are at your core. And then, because once you know, and you, you, you know exactly who you are, your personality type, what humor you like, what you don't like, then that really, I think, helps you come into your own. Yes. Mm. Um, because for me, I mean, I started I started making content when I was like, you know, 18, 19 years old. So I've grown up, make, you know, through making content, which is partly the reason why it's taken me uh, so long to get to where I am today is because I was I was growing up. I, was, I still had growing up to do and learning. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so like, that's why we say everybody's on their own their own journey depending yeah. on when they start. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I think you make a very good point in terms of retail because it makes you be uh, personable and it makes you be approachable. Um, so I've always mm. worked in retail as well or a front-facing job, done that. Obviously, we've talked about my video editing. Um, obviously, you did that work for big things. And the, I think a nice thing about the video editing is that you are shackled for a lot of the time when you work for big companies. They're like, you have to do it this way, this way, this way. It's very cookie cutter. But when you're like doing your own projects, you can just go ham and you want to experiment with different things. So obviously, just experiment with like different um, concepts, genres and stuff like that. But what I would say, oh, sorry, there's someone at the front door. Yeah. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish that thought in a sec. I told okay. him not to order Uber Eats on, <laughs> while we're in the podcast, and he still goes and does it every time. I hope you got a flavor app. Um, yeah, no, it's, I, it's the ramen. He, he ordered it that quickly. <laughs> he did. He, he dropped it in. Um, I think for me, um, I, I owe all of my success to my mum, which is kind of weird, because my mum taught me uh, very early on that the most powerful skill you can have is the ability to communicate. You know, she... She took me to places where I learned where like I would take a day off school and rather than just sitting around the house or whatever it is, she'd take me on a bushwalk or she'd take me up to like some rainforest place and then we'd go find a cafe and she'd let me go order for myself. And I, I got to and I got to experience a lot of different people, a lot of different places. We moved around a lot as, as a kid as well. And I met, you know, I met high end business people that she worked with, but I also went and met uh, boat builders that knew my family from like years prior. Right. Like. I've, I've experienced a lot of different walks of life. And I think by experiencing so many different people, it's given me two major things. 
One um, is that I have the ability to really have a conversation with anyone. And it's funny because my grandfather, one of the big, biggest pieces of advice he gave to me was he said, if you want to be successful in life, you have to be able to sit down and have dinner with the queen. Or when you stumble out of the pub to be able to sit down in the gutter and talk to, uh, you know, the other drunk mates. And he said, if you have the ability to do both those things and everything in between, you will be safe throughout your entire life and successful throughout your entire life. So the experiences my mom has given me and the opportunities I've had, despite, you know, not being, you know, blessed in every way has set me up so that I'm always able to talk to people. And you're thinking, okay, well, that's, yeah, it makes sense. He's able to talk to anyone on stream and stuff, but it's actually how I got my entire job. Like I went from, I went from being this kid who, who could speak to anyone, do all these things, had met all these things to being a uh, script writer at studying film and video. And from script, I fell into doing documentary because I was so interested in people. And I had a, a, I had a, a knack and a talent for the interview. Like that was like, that was where I shone like, and even to, to this day, after all these corporate projects I've done, I've traveled the world doing doco, people always still say to me, like, n nothing has come close to my ability to sit down across from someone and personally engage with them to a degree where they're willing to share their story with me in a comfortable environment. Mm -hmm. You know, like I've, I've met someone and within an hour, I've been able to sit down and comfortably talk to them about like terrible things that have happened to them in a way that they felt comfortable to do. And all of that comes down to owing it to my mom. Like she gave me this experience to learn and to, to grow as a person. And I think one of the things I say to every teenager who wants to be a content creator, I'm like, yeah, go off and, and don't stream. Don't do all those things. Learn about the industry, learn filmmaking, learn lighting, editing, all those things. But the biggest thing I can give you is meet as many people as possible and have as many experiences as possible. Because at the end of the day, the more rounded you are as a person, the more, just, just the more success you will see, yep. right? And the more empathetic you are as a person, the 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 more people will flock to you. Mm -hmm. And if if you have the ability to, you know, make connections that are genuine to talk to human beings and to share experiences with them, then you'll also grow amazing networks of teams. You know what I mean? And one of the biggest things I failed at when I started streaming was I didn't do that because I was so scared. But now that I'm working with you guys and doing other stuff, I've met so many amazing people and I can see so much more success coming up from it. Yeah. And like, I don't feel so alone anymore and, and all sorts of things. So no, that's my biggest transferable skill is just honestly meeting as many people as possible and 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 being empathetic and learning from those experiences. Those life experiences, that's exactly right. I'm sorry, I missed the, the beginning of it, but it, yeah, it sounds exactly yeah where you have to be. It is all about people at the end of the day. It's people who employ you. It's people who you have mm. to get along with. It's people who are going to take you on that journey and you're, you're dead right there. The only thing that I was going to say in terms of uh, back to what I was going to say is a big transferable skill is um, what Nick brought up before in terms of I've always come up from a performing background. So I've always done acting. And I think this is for anyone. It's a lot of fun if you do an improv um, uh, yes. course. Because it, it, really it, yeah, it allows you to talk and it allows you to create something from nothing. And I know that a lot of people comment, I don't have any viewers. What should I be talking about? Should I be talking all the way through? Should I be doing this? Yes, you should be. Because if you enter into like a, a chat where nothing's going on in terms of the, the streamer isn't talking, and that's the first kind of thing you have is them just like honed in on the game like there's there's they're not going to talk you're not going to talk to them so definitely yeah. improvisation i think is a great thing acting public speaking because i know people can get very angry uh, not angry can get very um feel very anxious that's what's going for when you're in front of a camera yeah. and obviously with us we have that thing of like we feel comfortable because we've done it so often you've had to film yourself you've had to do this that and the other so definitely if you're feeling a bit nervous or anxious just do something to get yourself out because the hardest thing that a lot of people don't want to do is getting out of their comfort zone that's the biggest barrier so if i know my niche i'm going to stick here i don't want to do that so i'm just going to see what happens but as soon as you get yourself out of that comfort zone and you achieve something that you need to do that you thought i never could have done this you know when you're a kid and you got to go to a birthday party and you're scared the first birthday party you're going to or something it's like i don't know these kids here or things like that but when you go and you have the best time of your life make new friends exact it's like that in terms of adulthood as well mm. in terms of new skills that you can learn so honestly the more that you do for yourself the the more it's the more success you'll see yeah, the, yeah. um there's a uh a thing it leads on to what lj and what you what you just said reaps is mm. and so at work right i'll get you know little kids that come in like these toddlers and and you know all like you know you know five-year-olds that kind of thing and you know what these kids 
have some of like the craziest confidence ever. You yep. know, like directly asking me all the, you know, things like that. They're, they're, don't get me wrong. There's def, you know, the OC kids are shy, but I meet some young, really young kids who are just out there. They're not afraid to like say something or yep. to talk to you or anything like that. They'll and go then, to high school and all that will change. Don't worry. They'll yeah, have exactly. their life. They'll have their PTSD all about and anxiety. Exactly. Imaging. Yeah. And then I'll get, yeah. you know, I'll get kids, you know, kind of like, you know, 12 to, to 16 and they're just so shy. Like they'll come up to like buy something. And I'll be like, oh, hey, how you going? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm yeah. Good. Like they yeah. just want to buy, they just want to buy the thing and leave. And I just like, I'm, and I say this to my coworkers. I'm just like, am I just getting old and grumpy? Like <laughs> these kids just don't want to talk. Like, but I, and I think to myself, like, th there's the confidence. And now you have the, the occasional kids who are actually confident. And it's, yeah, I guess it comes a bit, comes down to upbringing and, and how you're raised, where it's like to, to have those experiences to go and meet people and be able to just, talk to someone you don't have to have the like the most in-depth you know mind think brain boggling conversation but you need you need to be able to talk and yes. communicate yeah and i just i, I look I, at these I, kids i'm like what, what what's what's going on yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's by the way the joke i just made about high school is i'm being serious like i legitimately think that like most kids are like totally confident and they're great and then they get that high school period and they go through all the puberty and the fear and the judgment and the anxiety and everything and they come out the other end and they're just like and, it's, and this isn't me making light of high school either because high school is fucking terrible for so many people oh, without a doubt it was terrible for me yeah. it was terrible for my mm -hmm. mates like and you it really throws you i think a lot and i that's why i always say to these kids who are trying to get into streaming early they're like i've only got five views and everything's shit and it's all like that and to them that's that's honestly the truth how they feel yeah but it's also destroying any chance they have of being confident because they're getting five views, so they feel like crap, and then their mates make fun of them, and they feel even worse. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, just just take a breath, you know, step away, live your life, become rounded, and and you know, you'll 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 smash it. Exactly. Um, yeah. Streaming isn't everything I, I, as much as you'd like to believe that it is. Like streaming is the mm. be all end all. It really isn't. There's so many different <laughs> avenues. Like. Yeah, that's yeah. why, that's why yeah. you see content creators like if you follow, you know, big content creators on social media, they go out, they go and do stuff. Yep. Yeah. They, they take they breaks, don't. you know, they yeah. actually mm. go, I'm going to go and travel. You know, Pokemane, I was like, I'm going to take a month off because I just need it for my mental health. And I do, mm. wish we uh, illustrated that more because, again, there is that thing, the constant grind. We talked about it earlier on is that you feel this kind of need if you miss out on streams or, you know, you want to keep people that are out of sight, out of mind. You still got to worry about yourself more than anything else. Because if you're not well, then obviously, what's the point of doing it? You know, if you yeah, just a hundred percent. Um, but I hope that answers your question, Jess, uh, um, about transferable skills. I think we all kind of just think the same point. It's about literally just learn from yourself, learn from every experience you can. I think streaming and, and comedy, this is the thing, right? Streaming is very similar to any entertainment, but I think it's very similar to specifically comedy. And I think when you do something like comedy, a lot of it comes down to your personal experiences, you know, like every comedian, everyone knows the old, so I was doing this thing the other day and this totally real thing happened, right? Like that's yeah. like the start yeah. of every comedy stand-up show and it's kind of the same. Um, but I hope that answers, Jess. Uh, we'll, we'll grow too quickly another to another question. Um, and like, by the way, five new questions came in like in the last 24 hours and I took, I picked these ones before they came in. So if we don't get to yours now, we'll get to it uh, next week, hopefully. If not, comment it again on this one and it'll definitely have a, have a chance to see it. Yes. Yes. Um, Fazan, uh, Fazan is a lovely guy. Uh, he says, on channel trailers, uh, Nick does it really well. The Waluigi one is great. And that's part of the reason why he, he raids you, Nick. So there you go. Hey. Uh, perfect for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and he goes, LJ on Elden Ring and Hades. You like what you like. And they are definitely not perfect games. I've been streaming Elden Ring so far. I've had a great time with it. But if that wanes, I may look for another game. Again, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, that's a good, good way of looking at it. I think we were very clear at it that it wasn't that I said the game was bad. We just said that, you know what? It's not for me as a streamer. Mm -hmm. mm. But his question today is, uh, my work hours changed a month back and I'm looking at adding a third stream to my week uh, on Monday nights. Getting to the question, what's the best way you found of getting your community to follow you to the new day or schedule change? I brought it up on last night's stream and there was a bit of hype, which isn't very nice, but is there anything else I can do? Um, my big thing, make the very first time you do it a big unmissable event right? Be like, dude, I'm adding a new stream on Monday night and it's going to be this wild, wacky event that you do not want to miss. I'm going to be dressed up as Big Bird. I'm going to have a guy in a <laughs> gimp suit and I'm probably going to get banned from Terms of Service because it's going to get so wild. <laughs> um, and, um, and, yeah. but, but like people are, people are, people are going to be like, fuck yeah, okay, I want to be at this thing. Yeah. I want to be at this thing. 
and they w that, therefore they will make time to be there if you advertise it properly in your schedule and post it and talk about it every stream and get it into people's minds. Um, because at the end of the day, you're going to be like, oh, I've said it before. I don't need to remind it again. No. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you need to push every time because the majority of people either don't listen or can't hear the information. I can post in Discord, tweet it, say it on five streams in a row, and then I'm going to go live one night or I'll miss a stream. And there'll still be people going... <laughs> What's what's happening? What's going on? Yeah. This isn't normal. Yeah, it's, you, you just All gotta push it, time. make make it unmissable, and push it as much as you can. Um, yes. but that's that's my take. Um, there are backsides to that though. But you guys, any, any thoughts? Oh, um, it's uh, there's, there's there's only so much you can do. Um, I uh, like you have to build, uh, like the, the presence in everyone's mind. Like, like what LJ said is amazing. It's like, you kind of, you got to bring attention to it. Like any way you can, even if you don't have you, even if you don't, uh, you, if you're un unable to do like a big event stream or anything like that, just as much, bring as much attention to it as possible. Post in the discord, um, post like, you know, a couple of times like, Hey, just reminder guys, we're going to be live on this night as well. Now, you know, updating it in the Twitch, like posting about on your socials, just putting it in front of people as much as possible that you will be live at that time. So that people actively go out and be like, oh yeah, that's right. He's doing a new stream. Or sometimes you have some viewers who were, would just be like, they'll just be browsing Twitch at the time. Like, oh wait, mm. so-and-so is live right now. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, Reeps was live at nighttime and I was like, Reeps is live. What the fuck? What? Was, yeah, <laughs> literally you could go to my up. VOD. I had that exact same reaction and I was like, well, I'm I, I, I'm going to raid him now because this never <laughs> you happens. did and I thank you for that amazing raid. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think the big thing about it as well is if you're going live at a new time and you get people joining in at that new time and it's a constant new time, remind them, by the way, guys, this is a weekly thing. This isn't mm. just a one-off because sometimes people think it's a one-off and I, because I do a lot of one-offs recently, there's just been opportunities, sponsorships, all that kind of stuff. And it's a one-off and I, I, and I remind them, I don't make a big deal about it. I just go, if you do want to be, if you're live, I'm um, sorry, if you're awake, come over here, I'm live, things like that. But if this is a new thing for you facing and it's stuck in there, make sure that you make that a big part of the event as well to celebrate the fact that I'm going to be live three times a week on this night at this time, we're doing da 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 and just, you know, put it all the way through, make it a command in your, your chat. So it goes off every 30 minutes saying, Faze has got a new live, is, is it's live tonight. So be sure to, you know, hear those notifications, blah, 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 all that kind of shit. But I think the big thing that I'd like to ask us as well as kind of a spin-off of this question is, boys, if you streamed three times a week, what do you think is best? Doing three days in a row so there's a block in the week or do you prefer to spread them out so there's kind of like, I know this person's live every second day as opposed to I'm live, you know, three times in a row as a block? There are benefits to both. Mm -hmm. The block benefit is, is the fact that if someone rocks up one night, they'll rock up the next night and the next night and they'll get the content. Yeah. But the big negative is the fact that if you're live only three days, that means there are four days in a row where they're going to go find other streamers yes. who are live more and likely they'll spend more time there and therefore you'll have less conversions. Mm -hmm. So I would say that personally for me, if I had to make that choice, I would do Monday, Monday Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. Because I think that that is more organic in terms of, oh, okay, he's there Monday. Tuesdays is night off, Wednesday is there, Thursday is night off, Friday is there, and then Saturday, Sunday, they're not really going to be out looking for new streamers or seeing these things because hopefully they're spending time with family and friends and, and movies and stuff like that. Um, and I, I think that the three night spread is better for what I would be aiming for. I think so. I, I, yeah. I've got nothing to add to that. I'm, I agree with the spread out. 100%. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. literally the, the reason. That's that's why I, I tend to, to spread out uh, my days as well. Okay, mm. so we're all going to spread yeah. out. Yeah, we're all spread out. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one's gonna spread out. Gonna have right, to do so cool. much editing on this. One. <laughs> oh, sorry, I've got, a cold. I've got a cold. I've got a cold still. Gucci. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. God damn it. God damn it. I can't. This is gonna be a mess of an episode. It's gonna be. Remember, internet remember, cutouts, remember, but... remember when we talked about like high tier comedy? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Me, me neither. Me neither. Hey, actually, we, I don't we, we've that. made it, and this I, is what you I, get. I, yeah. I I told you guys. I'm I'm just making my jokes. And I'm being more <laughs> confident. All right. Okay. All right. Don't censor me. Um, oh, God. All right. Next question. Next question. Hold on. We do the PewDiePie thing. Next question. question. There we go. There you go. Uh, you guys were so delayed. You're terrible. Come on. <laughs> no. Get better. Um, <laughs> Lamp Devil. Lamp Devil says, a very positive podcast today. I'm certainly feeling the good vibes to take me into another week of streaming. Fuck yeah. Yeah, boy. Um, to throw a question your way, do you have any advice about doing special events on stream? How far ahead would you generally promote that you're doing a birthday anniversary milestone? How about event structure? 
pitfalls we might not think of. I really loved what LJ mentioned about how the climax of his baking stream came before the end of all the planned events with the cake happening and then people dropping off. That's fantastic to keep in mind, but I'd love to also hear Nick and Reeps' thoughts on how to structure an event as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicholas, Reepsilus, what do you think? <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's full name. <laughs> Reepsless is my maiden name, it's, it's and I promise yeah. to never bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Reepsless D. Lucifer. I like it. It sounds, um, it sounds super fancy. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, I could, I, I'll, I'll kick off. Um, so the, I would say my most successful stream in terms of making an event was my my subathon, you know, what everyone did after, after Ludwig did it. But it was last year and around May. And what I did was I did some photoshops of different uh, levels of what would get to. And if we got to this level, it would be a 24-hour stream. And I think mm. I did it in such a, a good way because I did promote it about a month before the fact that it went live. And I said, chat, if you want to you know, if you want to save your subs or anything like that, I am going live on this day. The more subs I get, you know, whatever. And I did a big old thing where even throughout the actual stream itself, I had a Photoshop of all the tiers because usually people put yeah. a command in and people don't want to click on a image, you know, kind of link and then go out of the stream and look at it. They kind of want to be part of it. So I always used to have this as a background and go, okay, we've reached this. And if you do this and this and this, and I went down the list and it just, it became really nice in, in that regard. And people knew that the overall climax of the stream was that if we got enough, I would be live for 24 hours. We hit it in the first two hours and I was like, I've made a gross understatement here. Um, I really should have done more. But I also think it was the fact that we did hype it up because if I didn't hype it up, if I didn't put in the Discord, if I didn't put on the socials, if I didn't like keep promoting it, made it a custom command that people could type in, knowing what's this about a 24 hour stream? There's people like, have you done your 24 hour stream yet? Knowing that apparently I'll do a 24 hour stream. Um, that it was always a continual uh, uh, chat kind of thing for the thing. And mm. it was really, really good in that aspect because I did hype it up a lot beforehand. And so that's really on the only thing you can do when you think about it. You can make videos, you can do things like that, re really kind of try and zhuzh it up a bit. But the, the most important thing is also use your moderators to like even do like insults to you in terms of like, wait until this date where I'm going to see you go 24 hours live while I'll be in bed sleeping, you know, just a nice kind of rapport where it's chat versus you, just something that really sticks out. Yeah, that's that's the best method I could say. Yeah, mi mm. I think minimum you want to, especially like, especially if you want it to be massive, like you like, like every time I've done uh, a birthday stream, or I've done like a big charity stream or anything like that, or like I'm doing like a series of charity streams, I hype it up, like try to hype it up at least like starting like at least two weeks. Mm -hmm. Like you want to keep putting it in people's minds and like, like there's going to be this big payoff. There's going to be this big thing. It's going to be amazing. We're going to do all this cool, cool shit. Um, you need to, yeah, you, I think at least two weeks of putting it. And that doesn't mean like spamming people every single day. Yeah. It means every time, you know, every time you stream mentioning it, you know, throughout, throughout the stream every now and then beginning, middle end, um, and then, you know, every now and then putting, putting a graphic up or referring to it like on your socials in the discord, you do the same way that you want to make sure that you keep your presence, uh, f in front of people, you know, when you're not live or, mm -hmm. you know, when you have to take a day off, you want, you need to be in their presence. Otherwise they're going to go, um, same, same regards here. You need to keep it in their mind, in their head. So that way they know when that day rolls around and that date rolls around that like they know it's like, oh, this is the day the big yep. thing's happening and they're going to show up. They're going to and they're going to be ready. to. And go. I was going to say a really good point there is the fact that if you link your big event to a date that people already know, for instance, if I go come visit on May 22nd, you know, it's kind of mm. like, uh, how am I going to remember that type thing? But if you go April 1st, April Fool's Day, I'm doing something. Um, Friday the mm. 13th, I'm going to be doing something. If you link it to another actual day that sticks out in people's mind, it's so much easier for them to remember. It's like, oh yeah, there's that there's that Halloween stream today because it's Halloween night in Australia, but it's not Halloween here. It, there's It's easy to link to what, rather than like a kind of, I know it can't be done every single time, but it, it definitely does bring that kind of a uh, uh, link there more so than just or even e e on the same thing even just adding it later in the week yes right so like for me i have tuesday through friday if i do a stream tuesday because i have to often i'll have to remind people on the monday somehow in the discord or on twitter right but if i did that if i did a special event on the friday i've got tuesday wednesday and thursday to keep reminding people to come back on friday yeah you know what i mean and so i think that's really really powerful to do it to do it that way um on the topic of special event streams in general though 
I think the event structure, because I don't know if we've really talked about the event structure. We've mainly just talked about scheduling, promoting. Oh, yeah. Um, I think the, the way to structure it is to, as we said last week, put your fireworks at the end, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, like at the end of the day, um, you want to have something building up to the end. The same as in all my YouTube videos, I say, I'm going to save the best tip for last. You know what I mean? And that's the truth. If you're eating a lovely meal, you save the best part of the meal to last, right? And that should always be the concept. If you're structuring it, Fill your entire stream with really good content. No gimmicks. Think about all, what is this special? Uh, special events have a really bad habit of accidentally falling into a gimmick, yep. right? Make sure you have content, 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 content with whatever gimmicks you want layered over the top. If you removed the gimmick, would you have content? Is a good question to ask yourself. And then have the final big fireworks saved right for the end, always building up to that moment and keep reminding people that we're working towards that big moment. Yes. Um, very good. Otherwise, as, as, as we saw in the last event stream I did, you know, I spent, we, we got really high up in viewership. And then for the last 30, 40 minutes, it just. Because they, totally they saw what yeah. they wanted to see and you're dead on there because yeah. like we talked about, I ate the world's hottest chip. You know, that was the climax yes. of, yes. of the thing. Yeah. And it, it really is pushing that. But I, I want you to make a really good point is you can't rely on the one gimmick. You've got to do things laid throughout there to help build, I don't know, the crescendo of it all, help build that anticipation. Because if it is just like people just come back, oh, so when are you going to do that special thing? In two hours time, you say, okay, I'll come back in two hours. You've got to keep layering things in there that will keep them engaged because obviously you want them mm -hmm. to watch you. And you obviously want those little kind of milestones to be hit that people like. That was really cool because sometimes the little milestones that you think aren't going to be as big as the climax, they're the ones that are more available for uh, clipping or for, you know, Later on, that's a really good idea. People really enjoyed this section. I should make a whole stream of that. So yeah, very good point there. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Uh, next question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Probably, uh, probably, say probably our last question, I think. Or do I yeah, have any I questions? Would, yeah. I would say that's our, I'll say this will yeah. be our last one. Uh, so that was uh, Lamp Devils. And our last question of the night is uh, from Rytos. So Rytos, we actually gave feedback to a podcast or two ago. Um, and it sounds like they're going to work uh, quite hard. They've, they've taken it all on board. Um, they've done about three, four paragraphs. It's actually a really good read if you guys want. Um, it talks about some of his best experiences and also the work he's going to be putting in. Um, and he wraps it up by saying, you're making us do a lot of work down here answering all your questions you ask us. Finally, a question for you. Um, I have a very serious question, very personal question for all three of you, and I'd love to know, what is your favorite anime? And his is personally One Piece or Everyday Life of a High School Boy, which is a very, very, very funny anime, actually. I think it's very accurate to what I know some of my mates are. Um, so I'd love to know. Boys, uh, do you have a favorite anime? <laughs> oh, I, I am, I'm such a weeb. Like, I watch a lot of anime. Uh, right, honestly, right now, like, Jujutsu Kaisen is up there in Attack it's on so Titan. It's so fucking good. Oh, my God. I haven't watched the final episode of Attack on Titan yet. Um, I'm going to watch it today with Claire, and I'll tell you what, if it's good, if the final episode ever is good, then it might be my favorite anime ever. If it's bad, it's gonna be my most hated anime. All I'm gonna say, LJ, and this this is not, I'm not spoiling the I episode. I don't even wanna hear it. No, I don't wanna hear anything. No, no, no. Don't. It's Stay off, back off boys. <laughs> yeah. I don't want anything, okay. all right? Well, come talk want... to me after you watch it then. <laughs> okay, I will. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen, you're right though, is, is fantastic. It's my favorite, I don't know. I feel like I can't say something's my favorite until the anime is over. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the, en the ending of an anime, I think, holds it very, very powerfully. The ending of Soul Eater made it terrible, but the actual Soul Eater was great. Full Metal Alchemist, the original, terrible ending. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, amazing. Um, so uh, my favorites are probably the same as everyone else's, but I I'd like to wait and see how it ends, you know? Um, yeah. Reaps, you don't even watch it, do no, you? No, no, my favorite is probably South Park. Um, really good character <laughs> arc. Um, I, I don't actually watch a lot of anime, but I am going to start watching Attack on Titan. I will say yes. that some of my most formative uh, when I uh, years in terms of watching uh, Japanese animation was back when I watched like Ninja Scroll and Ghost in the Shell. I was blown away by that. Like I was just like, boom, like especially Ghost in the Shell is mm -hmm. like, what the frick? So I know how powerful um, they can do with storytelling, especially doing like a long series. So I'm very excited to jump in. Unfortunately, it would be remiss of me and fake to round it all back fake. around yeah. to go yeah. that I know the best animes or that I watch them because I don't, but I would like to get into it. And I have some good recommendations from these two lads, yeah, wherever they are well. on, the, on the side. So I will get back to you in terms of what yeah. I think is good. Once I'll, mm. uh, one thing I'll say right now, it's mm. a it's a very c a consumable little uh, anime, Erased. 
erased. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Erased. Erased. Uh, okay. I'm going to throw a hot take out there right at the end. Hey, anyone who thinks the new Shaman King anime on Netflix is good, you're a fucking liar. All right. <laughs> you're, you're, you're an absolute liar. That is one of Damn. the worst animes ever. You can't go from saying there's ghosts and acting like it's just some cool little story about talking to ghosts and fighting each other to having people have mechs, all right? <laughs> Grow up, stick to your lane. It's a shit anime for shitters, all right? That's all right. I had to get that out of the way. That's now I want to watch this for a piss take. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Sh Shaman King's one of the most beloved old school mangas and animes, but the remake of it is the only concept I've seen of it. I don't know if it's the exact same, but I've got I've, I've, my take. I hate it. Wow. I watched the whole thing too, so they can't pretend like they can't pretend like I, I'm not allowed that take because I watched every fucking episode <laughs> of that show. And for, for for after the first like eight or nine episodes, someone said to me, "They go, it gets better after eleven episodes in. Eleven episodes in is when they started bringing in mechas and tech and tech and shit like that." Right. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "That's to me, that's sure. a big throw off." Is when they're like, "Oh, it only takes twelve episodes to get into. I don't have time for twelve episodes. I want to be like hooked from from you know pretty much the game. Give me." Four is the amount. Four episodes I Good. can do. Attack on yes. Titan takes four. Four yes. Attack on fine. Titan, I say this well, to everyone. It, dude, I'm not going to watch 12 hours of goddamn right. content before it gets into the good season. stuff. What's the point? Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Re no, you know, re re starting Attack on Titan, you won't have to endeavor or endure what the rest of us did waiting like so long mm -hmm. for the next season. You'll be able to just binge watch pretty much the whole everything. Thing. I'm pretty excited yeah. for that. I started watching Attack on Titan uh, after three episodes had been released, the original season, after three episodes had been released in Japan. So I have been watching week by week Attack on Titan since the third episode that came out like 11 years ago now or something. 11 years ago it came out? I think it came out longer than that, actually. Um, when did Attack on yeah, Titan <laughs> air? It's it's been a while. It's it's been a while. Oh, right. um, I didn't realize it seventh, was that seventh long of, ago. Seventh of April, twenty thirteen. So just under ten years. Jeez. I've been watching week by week for ten years. <laughs> wow. I started watching it. I think uh, after the dub came out uh, on season for season two on Netflix. That like mm. for timing wise. Should I be watching the dub or should I be watching the subtitle? You should be sub. absolutely watching the sub. The sub. the I, I don't really care what people do, but you should definitely watch the subtitles okay. in Attack on Titan because uh, one of the characters in it, Armin, his voice actor in English is really, really funny. And it ruins so many moments, some amazing moments. And then this, he's like, Eri! <laughs> Attack on Titan Abridged is amazing, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I gotta watch that after I watch this series. I don't want any spoilers for myself. All right, all right. But I think we're I think we're dropping frames. Uh, hopefully, no one noticed all this Discord and cloud flare issues. Um, yeah, it was a lot. But team, there were any issues. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was, oh yeah, it was, it was, it was totally all seamless with it was, editing. Yeah, of course, it was perfect. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a good good potty. Uh, yeah. Everyone, good potty. Yeah, good, uh, <laughs> good potty. <laughs> I'm really learning how to get a good potty. I think I'm learning. Uh, it's we're like potty training, training right? right? We're potty and, training. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think um, we're getting we're getting we're better getting, at that's it. How, um, that's how we should start uh, episodes. It's like, hey guys, it's potty time. It's time to go potty. <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> oh my God. Um, very quickly, LJ, you've got to give us uh, the next week's what people say and what oh, we say. Oh, I want you all to come into, I had something else. So I'm going to go with this. Okay. I want you all to come into our chats and I want you to say, I just finished potty training. Um, that's what I want you to say. And we're going to say, we're going to say, good job. Good job. And make sure it's P-O-D-D-Y, yeah. not P-O-T-T-Y. Yes, yes. Yes. With an I-E on the end. P-O-D-D-I-E. Oh, I just okay. finished potty training. There you go. Um, and we say good and job. And if you want to get really cursed, you've got to say, I just finished poey training. And with a W <laughs> and a W instead of we're an We're dropping R. frames. Um, <laughs> it's, been, <laughs> it's, been, it's been lovely. Thank you again. Please leave comments. Please leave likes. All that good stuff. It really does help us and the algorithm. Please leave Q um, questions for us because we love answering them. And again, as you can see from the past two potty episodes, we've taken one question question you've done and made into a whole formative uh, uh podcast so thank you so you're much making for the that. content for us yeah you honestly yeah. make it the content for <laughs> us so thank you so much but from us bye-bye now bye-bye bye all